Wolf, get away from those sheep. Bollocks. You're listening to the Wolf and the Shepherd podcast. Broadcasting from Fort Worth in the great state of Texas. Now, get ready for this episode of The Wolf and the Shepherd. No, you don't need the headphones. No, I didn't have you want to do my voice test thing so I can hear it. So what I sound uh, like. Okay, yeah, go, go ahead. Hello, Wolf. Hello, Shepherd. Wait, do, do, you're the wolf. I know, I'm talking to and myself. I'm, I'm talking oh. to myself. Hello, Wolf. Hello, Are you still Shepherd. wearing the same sh- same T-shirt as yesterday? Yeah. Well, yes, I am. So. I think I even wore it the day before. Yeah. But it might be a different one. I can't remember because Cindy has a habit of sneaking stuff, which I don't ask for her to wash, washing it and putting it back in the well, closet before I notice. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And with uh, that said, welcome to this episode of The Wolf and the Shepherd. We are going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we did a recap not that long ago with episode 100 and we're celebrating one year of the podcast and quite honestly did you think we'd even make it a year right i mean we we looked at it and we said how do we celebrate a year of the podcast and we felt like at episode 100 we needed to do a recap but then we said you know there's been so many interviews so many interesting people that we've talked to that we just want to kind of have an episode that we're just going to sit back and, and we're just going to talk about how the podcast has affected us. Uh, the stuff we've learned. I just realized that when I set the camera up, I didn't even double check it. And, (laughs) You know, we got a little bit of a gap up there at the top. But, you know, once again, that's the way we do it on the Wolf and the Shepherd. So, you know, we we don't have the cool intro music. But, hey, anyway, uh, so we're just going to kind of have a little bonus episode here and just kind of talk back and forth about the past year of having this podcast. Now, when you say you weren't expecting us to go for a year. Was that because you thought we were going to die of COVID or you were referencing our complete lack of commitment to anything whatsoever past the initial? Oh, wait, it's the, no, it's lack of commitment. Cause 'cause we looked up, there is something called pod fade that most people that create podcasts go on average seven episodes and it dies off. Yeah. You looked it up. I couldn't be bothered to look it up. Well, exactly. And so uh, I figured, you know, everything we've always done, we kind of fade off and we say, oh, no, you know, we're sick of that. Let's move on to something else. So I figured we'd probably be part of that pod fade and there'd be, I don't know, three or four episodes floating out there. We'd forget about it. And, you know, two or three years from now, we're sitting around drinking a beer or something like that and say, hey, remember when we did that podcast thing a couple of years ago and we did that and... I'd probably say, no, I don't remember that. And then we'd have to look it up on the internet and it would take us forever to find it. But here we are, like literally, we've done this for a year, over a hundred episodes under our belt. Yeah. I, I just, I didn't think we would make it this long. Now, talking of a lack of commitment, once in chemistry class in high school, I was trying to get myself into a group for this group project where I knew they'd do all the work and I could just kind of ride the coattails, probably then volunteer to do the presentation so it looks like I did all the work, where in fact all I did was stand there and talk. So I told the teacher when I was trying to persuade them to get in this group, I said my commitment was second to nobody, right? Trying to bigging myself up. So anyway, what I didn't know was that each week when we had this allotted time to do this project... She was going to rotate and sit down in each group. And after about two or three weeks, she quickly realized my commitment wasn't really showing itself during the group time. And so she pulled me aside. She goes, Tristan, when you asked me to be put in this group, you told me your commitment was second to none. And I looked at her and I said, yeah, you kind of got the wrong end of the spectrum with that. You were thinking I was here and this was the next most committed person, right? But I was talking about me being right here at the bottom. And here is the next most least committed person. So I am second to none. 
it just so happens you thought I was talking about up there when really I was uh, lowballing the project right from day one. I just wanted to make sure that you didn't go to a Catholic school and you were second to a nun, and the nun was just out there and she was in first place. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, no, not chemistry. I don't know if nuns learn chemistry. Probably not. Because it gets them kind of thinking about a little bit too much about science and they might drift away from um, all their firm beliefs in like babysitting Jesus in the church yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, that's true. Actually, can you tell us about babysitting Jesus? That is one thing I learned from you before we actually ever did this podcast. One day while we were drinking beers in his driveway, he told me about babysitting Jesus and I'd never heard of this before. So please explain for the benefit of the viewers and the listeners what on earth babysitting Jesus is about. I wish you would have told me that I was going to have to explain this before we hit the record button because I don't remember all the details. Doesn't matter. Concept. Yeah, concept. Fair enough. So in the Catholic religion, there is part of the priests and everything that hang around the cathedrals, the the churches, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I think people now, churches work. Fast forward to the uh, babysit right. Jesus bit. And so part of what they're supposed to do is babysit Jesus and actually just kind of hang out there. They can't leave Jesus alone. It, they've got to have somebody there to babysit Jesus. And I found that fascinating mm. that... I was like, well, wait a second. You know, when going into Christianity, you have the Holy Trinity and everything. You got God the Father, Jesus Christ, you got the Holy Spirit. But apparently we need babysitters, Mm. you know, to just hang out in these churches and babysit Jesus. I was baffled when I heard this. I think I'd just give Jesus an iPad to keep him busy if I was like babysitting him so I could just sit there and play on my phone. So in, in fairness now... Maybe that was like maybe 20, 25 years ago, and maybe the Catholic religion has said, hang on, a few hundred bucks, we can go get an iPad, Mm. and we can let baby Jesus play Roblox on the iPad, and now we don't have to babysit him anymore. Because, let's be honest, if you've got somebody that's going to build some cool stuff in Roblox or Minecraft or whatever... I mean, Jesus could build some cool he's, stuff. He's likely got some un- unending funds as well, so we can right. unlock everything on there. Absolutely, away. that premium content. Not yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, and he's going to build some cool yeah. stuff on there, right? So, so why not go ahead and give Jesus yeah. an iPad and yeah. say, "Hey, build something cool in Minecraft." Yeah. Now you don't have to babysit him. I mean, it's just yeah. like we do with our kids. It's like, hey, you know, here's the device. Take care of yourself. So. I guess that's part of what's good about modern technology, you know. Yeah. You'd feel pretty good if Jesus gave you a five-star review on your Roblox app, though, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah. But think about Jesus going into Roblox and building his app. Like, how cool of an app would that be? Uh And he could charge whatever he wanted, right? Because, I mean, it's Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. For Jesus Christ's sake, right? So he's building his own app. Everybody's going to want to buy that. Well, all irreverence aside. No, that (laughs) that is not irreverent. (laughs) That is literally like Jesus Christ is going in there and building his own app. I think I've got a better payment plan for it, though. Okay. Because just like real church, right? When you're... When you're just becoming a Christian or you're not a Christian and you just started going to church, they don't hit you with the whole tithing thing until you commit, right? So what I think, if Jesus makes this Roblox app, he's going to release it as a free app, but then there's going to be in-app purchases once oh, you sign up. Oh, it's all about DLC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, just like religion. Yeah. It's like, hey, it's free to join, yeah. but then there's exactly. DLC later on. Yeah. So if you really want to you know, crawl up those... Yeah, you got to pay to play, yeah. so to speak, right. which is where you're going with, yeah. Yeah. The the thing is not to get too deep into religion, but I'm pretty sure the Jewish religion doesn't work that way. Like you got to pay up front. Yeah. You know, it's it's, a bit it's like Scientology in that respect. Right. Yeah. It's Scientology kind of the same way. I mean, you you got to pay for the app mm. up front and then there's no DLC later. Yeah. Now, Scientology though, you got to pay for the app up front. And then there's oh, well, constant DLC. Yeah, yeah annual subscription I, as well. Yeah, as DLC. I mean, yeah. that that will empty the old digital wallet pretty quick. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, 
I mean, as much of an advantage as it is for the Jews to be God's chosen people, the Scientology bunch do actually get a spacecraft. So that's... Uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of he, cool. He knew on the marketing thing, you know, kind of like... Because from the outside, a lot of people studying the Jewish religion over the last hundred years or whatever, or even throughout the last couple of thousand years, probably see the Jews as quite a persecuted people. So from the outside, right. you're not looking like... Well, it doesn't seem to be too many advantages to be Jewish, right? But you look at Scientology and you think, they've got spaceships. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So on the face of it, I think Scientology, even though it's a fake religion, and it is a fake religion, yeah. um, although they do have spaceships, or at least claim to have spaceships, I think that's a bit of a better marketing campaign than the Jews being God's chosen people. Now, if they were a bit more forward-thinking and be like, hey, when the rapture comes... We're going instantly, the rest of you. It's kind of be a, going to be a little bit hit and miss. I think they should sell Judaism based upon future stuff and not historic stuff because that doesn't look too impressive on paper. True, but it, one thing Scientology has going for it is the uniforms, right? It's all based off the Navy. So yeah. they, they have those folks that go out there and they kind of join the Scientology Navy and they have those naval mm. outfits I don't think there's any other religion out there that has that uniform. No, have you ever seen a dude where's my car? Yeah, and you remember the cult and the covered in bubble wrap. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the yeah, of, no, that that's true. Me a bit of but <laughs> yeah, but it, the problem is it's bubble wrap, right? It, they don't have the cool navy looking right. uniforms, yeah. right? I mean, Scientology has it right there. I mean, they've got all that real estate. They've got everything going on for them. Mm. They've got the nice uniforms. Uh, I don't remember what the people that dress up in the pretend navy they're called. That there is a name for it or whatever, but I mean they've got that squared away. It's normally cosplayers from YMCA from Village People. No, oh, that's are the ones true. Who fatally, yeah, dress or, up as or navy maybe people. there's like a cowboy religion, yeah. but then uh, they lost the cowboy guy from the Village People. Mm. And, no, they lost the Indian person, not the cowboy. Oh, you can't say that anymore. What? No, the Indian person. He's the Native American person. No, he's he the had Indian to, person, No, he right? had to quit the band. Mm. And that, that's what kind of shut down the village people yeah. because that was looked at as you know bad and racist, and so he yeah. had to leave the band. That's why it's like the YMA. Well, now, he, he was the C in the YMCA. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I have more of a concern with being fiscally tight so if i'm going to produce a t-shirt it's still going to say cowboys and indians and not cowboys and native americans because if i'm paying per letter i'm just going to take oh, the risk of being cancelled i think that's a good point though yeah. i mean that's a, that's a fiscally yeah. way to save money yeah. speaking of t-shirts i mean looking back on the past year i mean here you are you're sitting in one of our t-shirts i was too lazy to actually put one of our t-shirts on today but i mean we've got merch yeah i mean did did we think we were gonna have merch when we started this podcast no we were hoping for it because we were hoping somebody was gonna pay for it and so yes. we'd get paid to wear our own stuff but that didn't work out because we didn't plan it but right it, especially adidas since you continue to wear an adidas hat mm. all the time and adidas, adidas, adidas... Have given me a lot of money over the years so i'm proud to wear their stuff well i know but you know what they're not giving you any money on the podcast mm. side this is all from the soccer days well when somebody gives me money to wear a hat i'll wear the hat oh i'll give you 50 cents to wear like a viking hat does it have the horns on it yes well yeah but then people are gonna think i'm a minnesota vikings fan and i'm not did you know the Vikings didn't actually have helmets that had the horns sticking out? Yeah, I knew that. Oh. Mm. Of course I know that. I'm European and we actually learned history, history in schools. Oh. Well, you know, we learned history over here, the important mm. history. You know, because... Not much. You know, well, it, there's only the a few hundred the years. Version. Well, there's only a couple hundred years yeah. that we have to learn. The I mean, edited, of the, edited to fit the... Dis- 30 minute slot on TV version. That's the history you learned in school. Right. But, so. but that's the great part of being an American because <laughs> they, being a European, you've got all those years of history you got to learn. Over here, it's like a couple hundred years. We can do this in like an afternoon or yeah. maybe a Saturday morning. Yeah. That That's one of the great things about being an American, mm. Is which is why you hopped on the boat and came over here, even yeah. though you flew on an airplane. But it, it's more fun to think you hopped, hopped on a boat. On the boat. Yeah. Yes. 
because I'm pretty sure everybody from Europe that comes over here is pretty much boat. Yeah, yeah, it's a boat. Yeah, uh, it's the big boat in the sky, right? Yeah. So once we got going with a podcast, we started picking up more and more guests, which gave us the opportunity to actually learn things for real, because. As we've mentioned frequently, a lot of the time when we did the research for episodes, it was bare assed at best, the research, because it literally right. was first page of Google. If the title looks like it's kind of relative, you know, like on, um, I think it's Yahoo when you do a search, it's like this looks 72% relevant, or is that DuckDuckGo or whatever. So anything which looked remotely relevant to what I was typing in, I would click on it and just run with it. And I don't think, other than a few statistics, there was any double-checking on anything. So all those ads on TV at the moment, which keep talking about updating internet regulations, they do need to be updated to kind of do something like the first page of Google must tell the truth. Now, once you get past page one, you're on your own. If you believe any of the crap past page one, just go with it at your own risk, right? But page one of Google should be the absolute truth. So was I supposed to double-check everything that you were looking up on the first page of Google, was that my responsibility? Well, not really, because most often I didn't tell you the topic until we sat down to record, so that wasn't... Yeah, it was about yeah. 30 seconds before we mm. hit the button, Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, it, we talked about, you know, a ton of topics, and once again, I mean, we already went over our past 100 episodes. We're not going to go through that. Yeah. But I don't think, it, when we started the podcast, right... I don't think we ever intended to have as many interviews as we did. And mm. honestly, some of the folks that we have had on, and that, by the way, after this, you know, you're going to see more episodes with interviews. We've had some fascinating people on we here. And, and there's been things we would have never thought about looking into, asking questions, finding experts, blah 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 there's some people that yeah we got a little uh, selfish and we said hey we want to talk to an expert about this or that but then we've been presented with some people that we would have never thought about hey this would be something fun to talk about mm -hmm. something you and i wouldn't have ever google searched yeah and we always kind of prep our guests and say, look, we're not going to ask you the same questions that you probably regularly get asked in other interviews because it doesn't matter how much somebody likes you, even if it's your own mum listening to it. By the time you've answered the same question like four or five times, it gets a bit boring unless something new, fresh has happened. So um, we always tell guests, look, for the most part, past a few introductory questions, we're not going to ask you the same stuff you normally get asked. And uh, their reaction is kind of like, oh, wow, I'm going to like be challenged intellectually here because I'm going to be asked things which normally I don't get asked, so I better do some research even in my own you know, place here, even in my own field of expertise. So we get them on the show and we ask some questions and then they realise, oh, wait, they meant they're going to be asking me questions that nobody normally is too dumb enough to ask. Exactly. When they said they were going to presume no knowledge, I thought they just meant, about this topic not assume no common sense right yeah but it, you know we we have had some guests and it's actually been fun because it we've had we have had some guests right that have been on other podcasts and so we actually will kind of research those guests listen to the podcast that they were on before and we kind of laugh when, and we usually actually do it after we've interviewed them, which is probably a mistake. But it, then we hear these canned answers and we're like, well, wait, that's exactly what they said here. But then we listen to them on like four or five other podcasts and it's the same interview. But then we realize those first couple of questions are those canned answers. And then we hit them with the rabbit holes mm -hmm. that we love to do because yeah. it, it's so hard, honestly, to write the descriptions on some of our podcasts because by the time we actually put it out, how do you put everything into the description that we talked about? 
you only have, I think it's like 4,000 characters or whatever. I'm like, I'm not writing 4,000 characters worth of a description. It's like, hey, we talked about this, you know, good luck and, you know, take a listen. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, then, you know, here's a rope and soak it with urine. Yeah. For a moment there, I thought you meant we could only have 4,000 characters, as in 4,000 different people in the description. And I thought, well, that's fine. We're never going to wear that. Well, no, no, that's true. That. Yeah. But um, one thing with guests, when they come on, they do need to be prepared to kind of jump into some muddy puddles here and there. Because like, just because you think you're coming on and talking about chemical memory uh, does not mean you're not going to be ending up talking about panda sex three minutes into the podcast. Right. Or, it, you know, we, we've had some guests, and especially, you know, I think about Katie Hess, right? Yeah, it, which Which was, you know, just on the podcast, and I'm like, how are we going to talk about flowers? Mm. Like, I, I know I'm supposed to buy flowers on Valentine's Day and Mother's Day and past that. No, you never buy it, them on Valentine's Day, mate. Too expensive. You buy them the week before, oh, then do it. Is this, is this a... Wolf and the Shepherd tip yeah. of how to spend well, maybe or how to be- save money. Not, not a week before. I might be kind of like overstating it then. They might be dead by the time you give them to them, which if your girlfriend's a bit of a goth, that she'd probably like that. Yeah, but yeah. I think they spray paint them. What, goths? Yeah, I think they spray paint the them flowers. Black. Oh, the flowers, yeah. yeah. I thought you meant spray painting goths. I thought, no, they just put on black clothing, mate. It's not. Oh, well, they, yeah. It's not, but oh, they, they, they might spray it's paint not, they themselves. they came in wearing like gray and blue and they thought, oh, spray paint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. No, it wasn't that, no. But um, flowers, yeah. Uh, Valentine's Day. Do you, give, do you buy flowers on birthdays? You personally, not the listening audience. So Honestly, you, you know, but so my my mother loves flowers. Yeah, and typically we buy my mother flowers for yeah. her birthday. You know, Mother's Day, uh, Easter, funerals, birthday. It, she loves flowers. Yeah, I wasn't specifically talking about your mother there when I mentioned funerals. I just meant general occasions. You can right. buy flowers. Yeah, but like my wife, for instance, and she likes flowers, but yeah. she doesn't want flowers as a gift. Mm. So, really? it, yeah, she doesn't. It, she doesn't really care for flowers that much. Yeah. Ironically, she likes candy, which flowers, candy, both gonna go away soon. Yeah. They either go bad or you consume them or whatever. How does I'm, candy go bad? What candy goes bad? Uh, chocolate goes bad. Well, it can do. Yeah, if you leave it in the passenger seat of your car exactly but that's what happens i don't, I don't think jolly ranchers are gonna like have a two-week no, we're, by day. no we're talking about chocolate oh, okay just yeah. purely chocolate mm-hmm. so yeah valentine's day then yes all right oh God, that went so, what's, south. so what do you get her on Valentine's Day then? Just chocolate? Oh, I don't buy my wife anything on Valentine's Day. That's fair enough. Well, she didn't you get know. you anything either, did she? No. Yeah. I, uh, my wife hasn't bought me a present in probably 15 years. <sighs> oh, hang on. Oh, let's go with more like uh, 19 years. Wow. Yeah. Uh. Well, <laughs> do you want a moment of silence? Yeah, we yeah I mean... Now that you brought that up, I mean, it's just... Yeah, we brought it, it up and it, it's brought us down. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just kind of sad now. I mean, thank God for Alien L. I'm no. going <laughs> to have me a good swig of Alien yeah. L and maybe I'm just going to walk off camera for a minute cheer, and just... No, I'm, I'm going to go cry in the corner. No, I know it will cheer you up watching me trying to play basketball with this. Oh. For the last year, I've attempted to throw my empty bottles in the trash can over there. Now, my success rate isn't high normally because the trash is, te- well, basically about nine inches above the top of the trash can for most of the week. But today, it's partially empty. So I'm going to have an attempt into an empty trash can. And will you give me $5 if I get this straight in there? Five dollars. I've made it twice in a year. And once was when it, when it bounced off the wall. All right, hang on, hang on. Here we go. All right. So, so here's five dollar bill. Gonna lay it 
right there. All right. Uh, and by the way, I'm too lazy to. I, I am too lazy to move the camera. Well, you so, don't need to because there's no way you're giving me five dollars if I don't get it in. So they don't need any proof. They'll yeah, know. Okay. You're not so, going to lie about it. All right. So let me go back over there and do what I was doing, and you go ahead and yeah. do your geometry and see if you can make this shot. Yeah. So um, immediately now, num now money has come into the equation. I feel a lot of pressure, so I'm going to withdraw from doing any press interviews for a while because this is the new thing now. Like, if you're an athlete like I am, throwing this into the trash can and money's on the table, I'm now too stressed to talk to the public and I want to be left alone for a bit and hopefully my sponsors are still going to keep sponsoring me. So I think that's how it goes nowadays. But anyway, here we go. Oh, my word. Now pressure's on. Oh, that was blocked. That was blocked. But by the way, you were never going to make it. Oh, so. so set up for so. Th so that is still my five dollars. So on the topic, and I left my drink over there. Yeah. On the topic of setting people up for failures, um, quite often we've had people kind of tune in because we've let them know, we've let the listeners know that hey, we're going to be doing an episode on blah blah blah. You know, if you're interested in this topic, listen, you might learn something. Now, they have learned something, but might not always be correct what they're learning. Because one of our favorite things to do is take the minutest of facts, just run with it, add on a few alternate theories, and then make those the main point of the story. So or are we taking our alternate theories and making those the facts? That's the same thing in it. I just said the other thing in oh. reverse. Yeah, gotcha. Because like, say there were five thousand mice in North Texas, right? Your first thought is, well, that's not many mice for like the whole of North Texas, right? So that should be the shock part of that story. But we will somehow make the shock part of that story that we assume that feral cats are now starving to death because you'd assume that mice make up a significant proportion of their kills and food. Sure. And so you're going to forget about the mouse stat, and now it's about dying feral cats. Mm. Mm. I'm okay with feral cats dying, though. Canadian feral cats. Dying. Exactly. French Canadian oh. feral cats. French, French Canadian feral cats. Yeah. But isn't, or I, I should say, aren't feral cats all from Canada? Well, I think so, because they, well, because this is thing in the United States, right? Especially for our listeners back, you know, in Europe and India and Japan and Australia and all those places. Um, in the south part of the United States, we kind of get invaded a little bit through the southern border from people coming from Central and South America. A little bit. Just a little bit. But in the north part of the country, we get French Canadians and their animals smuggling themselves in. So, you know, it's it's a bad issue wherever you are. Now, we're actually happier with the South Americans coming in than we would be if we lived up north and we had the French Canadians coming in. Oh, that's true. Yeah, because we like Hispanics. We're just not fond of French oh, Canadians. I, I love one Hispanic. Yeah, Salma Hayek. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, don't tell my wife. Yeah. Now, I think we've got maybe eight female listeners, which makes up... Are we up to eight now? Well, is it that much? Well, if your mom's been changing well, that, her IP well, address when well, she's that, been listening, no, yeah, that was my mom just calling. Yeah, I mean, it, and obviously we're not broadcasting this live, right. but you know, it, well, no. So, given that we've got such a small female listenership, and it literally makes up less than one percent of our entire listenership, we have interviewed quite a lot of women on the show. That is true. Uh, honestly, we have interviewed more women than i thought we would yeah. have you know because yeah. it, it, what i think our first interview was a woman yeah it layla. was layla yeah i mean our first interview was a woman yeah so we we're not chauvinistic not it, we, we are not well, sexist you know it, there's a lot of women out there that have a lot of good stuff to say and, and that was a big shock wasn't it that we oh, found that women actually yeah. have something interesting to say yes yeah. yes uh, yeah, it's a huge shock to yeah, us. We we love you, ladies, but yeah, yeah, we were still we shocked. Were, we were surprised, right? And, uh, 
you know, again, that's not misogynistic. That's just from personal experience yeah. from yeah. ourselves and everybody Look, we know. I, I can understand, like, why my wife wants to watch some of the, like, reality shows and everything that she watches that is very woman-centric, right? Yeah. And it's a lot of women in there. And it's like, I get it. it. You know, there's a reason why you want to watch this and I want to watch sports. And maybe I want to watch football and I want to hear you know, men that played the sport commentating on it or whatever. And I don't want to hear somebody, man or woman, by the way, that didn't play the sport in giving their opinion. Mm. I I just want to hear somebody yeah. that actually has a valid opinion and a, a validity behind them to say, you know, here's what I yeah, think I'd about this. Valid. Yeah, valid validity. <laughs> uh, you know, there we go. It's not Vlad the but, Impaler, but valid, it's, it, valid you know, the Impaler. they all they, they all start with V. V yeah. for vendetta. Yeah. Are we gonna give that speech with all the V words? I, I yeah. don't know that speech, but it's a cool speech. It is a cool speech. Yes, and thinking about it, if Valid the Impaler is Vlad's cousin, it's basically he's not as famous because they kept asking him. Can you justify putting that person on that spike? That's why he's called Valid. Yeah. Vlad. Yeah, so short short career. Unknown. There you go. Yeah. Vlad had him killed. Um, Probably so. But yeah, so from all the women who came on the show, a lot of that reason is because they were the only ones who were covering some of the topics we wanted to get on. It was difficult to get a man to talk about flowers, really. Or at least talk about flowers in the way we wanted to talk about flowers. Right. Yeah. I'm sure there are men yeah. that are out there yeah. that are going to actually talk yeah. about flowers. Yeah. But but they wanted to I pin don't a think we stickers on us. Right. So I, I don't we, think we, we would have got along with them very no, well. No. But, I mean, uh, uh, over, the, uh, over this past year, I mean, it, some of our most interesting interviews honestly have came from women. Yeah. I mean, they really have. I mean... We love May Deavy. Yeah, we love right? May. Uh, um, She's May, hilarious. May is going to come out right after this. I mean, we love May Deavy. She's yeah. part of the family. And we've Man. learned a lot from May Deavy. Yeah. So, uh, you know, love that. So, uh, I... Uh, we've had a lot of political people on the show as well. Yeah, so, uh, our, our sponsor, by the way has texted me yeah. and would like to call into the show. Okay. And and now I feel like we're kind of being a radio show here, right? So how am I going to do this? I'm I'm going to Can you put I'm, him on like loud or something? Put well, 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 no. So on our fancy little deal here, I'm I'm going to call him and uh see how this works. Uh mm. So calling here so anyway while he's doing this the reason we've got a lot of political people on the show is because we've been trying to build up our political influence in case one of us gets into some mischief and we need some leverage to try and get out of trouble so we figured if we get on every step of the way we'll kind of cover all the bases all right so it shows he's connected but mm. i don't hear oh oh i had him on mute all right that that's the problem oh so Jason DeBoard is joining us from Martian Margaritas and uh, the Brewer of Alien Ale. Jason, can you hear us? Yep, yeah, I ah. can. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. 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 So now we feel like this like call-in radio show. Uh, you know, on our one-year anniversary, we said, hey, we're going to do some crazy stuff on here. And obviously, we wanted you to join us. And we know you would have loved to been here in person. Appreciate but, it. Appreciate yeah. it. But so, yeah, it, but do, but so. before before we even say why you weren't here, it, tell us what you're doing right now. It better not be well, I'm with poop. The, I'm with, I'm with a group of guys. We're caravanning down to Louisiana to help with rescue efforts. We got a boat. We're going to live in a little RV for about a week uh, together, all crammed up, uh, taking boats. Um, you have to be a licensed peace officer to go down there. Um, and uh, we're going down there to help out. Wow. That's very commendable, man. Yeah. Cool. I, mean, I mean, that's so cool. Well, so, I'm not going to lie. I mean, we're, we're willing to do it for free, but we're, we're getting compensated. So um, I don't want to purport like we're doing it out of kindness of our hearts. We are because we were prepared to go anyway, but uh, someone wants to pay us to be there. So we're going to accept it to cover our cost of, gas and food and stuff yeah 
Now, no, um, I saw on I saw on the news that I, I think um, I think it was yesterday the first victim of an alligator was uh, killed during the storm because with the rising waters and everything, the alligators have gone from being in you know little spots here and there to now they've kind of gone floated into residential areas and a man was actually killed by an alligator yesterday. So that must be something uh, which you don't really mentally prepare for when you think you're going to go help actually, people. Actually, it's funny you say that. We have a guy with us, uh, one of our police officers, raw armed to the teeth with ARs and Glocks, but he brought a double barrel shotgun because he's scared of alligators. <laughs> <laughs> well, who wouldn't be scared of alligators? Well, I feel I'd be all guess- right if I was in a helicopter. Oh, yeah. there's a there's a few crazy people. The guys in Florida that swim the canals ain't scared of them, and a couple people in Louisiana jump in the water to show they ain't scared of them. Oh. Makes sense. I mean, I think if you right around them, you know, yeah, all right. Yeah, every now and then you see one of those videos where, like, um, I don't know, like in India, where this kid's got a pet boa constrictor or something and he pets it and it sleeps with a kid and doesn't strangle him and eat him which is seen as a bonus and it makes the news and same thing every now and then you'll get somebody who's like petting a crocodile and something and the crocodile doesn't try to bite his bollocks off or something and what people kind of are misled into thinking is like oh these animals have thoughts and feelings and you know if you raise them from when they're young they make nice pets what they're missing is the fact that these individual animals are a bit mentally retarded and not acting like the other vast majority of their species would act. They've actually got a little bit of mental damage, which is why they're not killing you. Because if they were doing they're what like, they were supposed to do as a species, they'd be biting they're like the testicles dinosaurs. off. Yeah, exactly. Well, they it's are the dinosaurs. Video. Yeah. The funniest videos I saw are the guys who watch too many of those crocodile shows with the professionals that would catch them. Yeah. And they, they would see one. There was one of an old guy in their golf course, and he threw a, threw a shirt over its head and jumped on its back and about bit his damn leg off. It shook him off. And these people watch those shows and think they're experts of it. Right. So. Yeah. So, uh, Jason, I, I know you're on your way and you're uh, going down there to help the folks there in Louisiana, but any news you can give us on our favorite beer, Alien Ale? Well, currently, uh, the brewery who I'm partnered with uh, to make it is signed with uh, one distributor, Fisher 59. Um, it's being distributed in about 25, 30 stores. As, um, the furthest south it's gotten to us is Decatur. It's in um, Al's Discount Liquor in Decatur. He's got four locations it's in every one of his. I don't know the particulars of all the other stores that far, because I'm focused on our, I'm focused on our next distributor. Hopefully, um, uh, Benny Keith or Andrews will will bring it down south to where there's a demand for it, or at least a request for it. You know, I have a lot of a lot of bar owners and managers down in the Metroplex, Hershey's, Bedford, Grapevine, Keller, South Lake, uh, Fort Worth that say they'd love to carry it. Um, we just got to get a distributor. Uh, willing to take a chance on us to bring it down here. Yeah, we've got very high hopes for Alien Ale in the future because it is a fantastic taste in beer. I think our measure of success is going to be down the road during the Super Bowl halftime show when Katy Perry's rubbing her tits over the Alien Ale logo. I think then we'll think, yeah, Alien Ale has made it. Yeah. Kind of forward thinking. I yeah, love that it. is forward thinking. I was mainly thinking about the tits and I just added the ale into the scenario. So. <laughs> Uh, Shepard, what are you doing? Who are you texting? Don't that, don't distract me right now. I'll talk to Jason. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jason, we, uh, what you missed before we called you or before you called us, uh, we were talking about the guests and how shocked we were that um, women actually have important things to say. Because, as you know, most of our listenership is predominantly male. And so having female guests on, we were kind of wondering, you know, who wants to listen to a woman talk on a show, right? But surprisingly, they have been very interesting. Some of them have been quite fascinating and have made good friends with us. So It's because, you know, the first few episodes are intrigued with your your, your cute accent. And after 100 episodes, they're ready for anything different. Yeah, that's that's true. woman. Yeah. (laughs) 
Oh, well, I'm interested in hearing a nice woman's voice on the on the show on the radio. Cool. Well, hey, Jason, thanks for joining us. Uh, good luck there in Louisiana. We wish you all the best, and you're doing some good work there. So we appreciate. Thank you very it. much. I, uh, good work on your show. Thank you for making me a part of it. I love you guys. Hope to be there in person yeah. again soon. And, and thank you, thank you for the sponsorship. And uh, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, you know, we, we wouldn't be here for a year without you. So not, we not, we really appreciate sober, that. Right. Well, not yes, sober. sober. Not sober. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It would have been a it would have been a boring show. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. Take Bye. care. Bye. Thank you, Jason. Bye-bye. Be good, my friend. Bye. Be safe. Right. Bye. So, uh, let's let's go ahead and make another phone call uh, with one of our more popular guests that I sent a text to, and saw you know, hey, can you join us for a few minutes? Yeah, he was calling. I saw. Yeah. Yeah. See, so he's too important. He won't pick up. Well, no, he was calling during Jason's yeah, no, phone call. He missed a window. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, it's busy. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell him to uh, call us back. I mean, I I feel like we're doing like this morning radio show thing, right? It, you know that Music we never it sucks. That, you know, we we never said we would do, but you know, it's the one year anniversary, mm. so you know, why not just go a little crazy? Get right? out, get it out of the way now. Yeah. Never I, I mean, it, it, I don't want to say who it is. I I, I think I just kind of leaked it out a little bit, but uh, he'll probably call back here in a second. Mm. So now, while we're waiting, we do just want to men- mention, given as we spoke to our uh, beer sponsor. That we have been a little bit flirtatious with companies regarding sponsorship or want of sponsorship yes. during the last kind of like year. Year. Um, Literally, yeah. year. Yeah. 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 So, so, you know, there are some companies which would love to have sponsor us and with some, we have, there's some companies we'd hate to have sponsor us, but that hatred is all relative to the level of... Junior Erickson. Hello? Ah, hang on. Let me make sure I connect this right. Uh, there we go. Can you hear us? Yeah. Hey, Junior. How you doing, bud? Junior, hey, what's going on? Junior Erickson uh, joining us on our one-year anniversary. Oh, yeah. I mean, one of our most popular guests. I mean, wait. Hey, guys, what's going on? No. Happy anniversary. Hey, thank you, thank you so much. I mean, Dave, we just finished up a Q&A with you, Junior, about a week ago. Got a lot of feedback from that, and now we're doing our one-year anniversary show, and we figured, God, we, we got to hear a little bit out of Junior. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's super glad you could join us for a few minutes, man. Oh, man, no problem. Happy anniversary, guys. Good Thank job. You. Now, since the last episode we put out, uh, well, actually last week with you, we've had quite a few emails asking the same question about when are you going to write another book? Well, you know what? I got some plans. I got a couple of things I'm working on. Uh, 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 probably, you know, I, it's, I, I'm a little ways out from that. I, I'm looking, yeah, I'm a ways out, but I got some plans for another one. Cool. Yeah, and and Junior, you know, I've I've sent you a couple of texts. I mean, it, even after that Q and A, I mean, there's more questions coming in. I guess one of my favorite comments now from the YouTube uh, video, and of course, it's only been out for a few days. You know, it, I I think my favorite one was some of those questions were lame, and I thought okay, well, they all came from listeners and everybody else. So this guy's saying, you know, these questions are lame. I'm like, well, they're not my questions. You know, they're everybody else's questions. So why didn't you put in a good question, right? Well, what defines a, a, a good question from a lame question, I, I don't know. Do you know what the difference is? I, a question's a question. It's what people want to know. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I mean, you know, what are you going to do, right, Junior? I mean, you're not going to 
you know, satisfy everybody. Yeah. And part of the problem is as well, whenever you open up questions to listeners, is that you always get those one or two people who are like, what type of fish are you? You know, what's your favorite type of tree? Just these inane questions, but they just think, oh, because nobody's asked them this before that, you know, I'll go ahead and ask something a little bit edgy. And the amount of questions we get for various guests and even for us, which we have to get rid of because they're just like, I don't, I don't know what people are doing when they're writing them, to be honest. Right. They might, I think they're out of the tree a little bit. Right? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, uh, my whole life, I've never, I've never pleased everybody. I mean, that's my whole story. I mean, I wouldn't do what I, what I did my whole life if I wanted to please everybody. But uh, you know, we, they're going to send the questions in. We're going to answer the best we can. And if uh, they don't like the questions, they come up with some better ones, right? Yeah, absolutely. Now, one question I was, I forgot to uh, get Shepard to ask you, Junior, was uh, down the line. Would you think of maybe writing a uh, film script to do a movie based on your life? Uh, you know, I actually have a script already uh, on, the, on, the, on the first book. But I haven't done a script on my life. No, I haven't done that yet. Oh. So I think a lot of people would be interested in that. Yeah. It, all right. So, so now I'm going to hit you one out of left field, Junior. You're getting a movie made about your life. Who plays you? You know, <laughs> that's a good question because me and my wife has actually discussed this before. And um, my wife always thought Sean Penn would be the best guy to play me. Huh. Uh, but we, we talked just about this a few years back, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Huh. No, but, I'm, I, I'm thinking like Jason Momoa. You know, <laughs> you know, some some big hoss guy that is just all muscles and and tough as nails. I mean, it, it's got to be somebody like that, Junior. Well, your first suggestion was going to be John Travolta. I couldn't see that one no, working either. No. no. Now, now, who did you most look? Well, like? I mean, yeah. <laughs> who did you most look like in your younger years, Junior? Because obviously, we know what you look like uh, now. And trying to think of what. Well, you know, I wasn't. Uh, I was never a real big guy. You know, I mean. Uh, I'm like 5'10". I'm 5'10", and, uh, you know, I got, I could carry, you know, 230, 240 pretty good uh, when, I was, when I was juicing up and working out hard. You know, I'm, I'm about 210 now, but, so I'm not a real big guy. You know, I'm, a, I'm in pretty good shape. I can still handle myself. I still shake them up if anybody wants to try, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> but, hey, I'm just an old dude. Trying to survive, that's it. Yeah. No, we, we know what you're saying, Junior. Yeah. <laughs> we absolutely do. <laughs> well, I mean, Jason Momoa, I mean, that's a, that's a compliment, but uh, yeah, yeah, I don't. It's a little I'm bit not real ethnically like Jason different Momoa, yeah. looking as well. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, hey, Junior, yeah, we appreciate you checking in with us uh, during our one year anniversary show. Uh, we wish you the best. And of course, you know, we had last week we put that Q&A out, uh, got a lot of hits on that, and they're continuing to come. And uh, looking forward to talking to you again. And we're, by the way, going to hold you to your promise that you're coming to Texas and you're going to sit in our studio and we're going to have another interview. You know what? I'm, I'm going to do that. That's going to be the, the next one's going to be in Texas. So uh, we'll get some more questions going and we'll, see what happens maybe some new stuff will pop up here in a, the next year or so and, and we'll have a good show out there cool. i mean you guys have good shows anyway but we'll have another good show you know sweet all right thanks junior have a good evening okay. we appreciate it take, man take care take okay care. and happy grand anniversary you guys thanks thanks Thank a you. lot talk to you guys later thanks bye yeah i mean so ha, ha, continue ha, along the topic do we have any women who are interested in calling in <sighs> Or could you not find any? Well, you know, I don't know. You know, it, who should we text? Uh, you know, it, the problem no. is, see, it, what some of the listeners don't know is you're the pre-production guy, yeah. right? So you have a lot of these phone numbers stored mm, in your phone, and then I never store them in there. 
So, I mean, we could probably call a handful of people, mm. but you have all the phone numbers yeah. and your phone isn't connected to the board. Especially so. to all the girls. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. You basically hide that from yeah. me, yeah. which is probably honestly a good idea. Well, I'm expecting a lot of Valentine's Day gifts next year and guests and stuff. You know what? I, I knew you had something going some behind cards, that. Some cards, some chocolate. Yeah. Some flowers. Then what's going to happen is we're going to split them in two. You can take half home to give to your wife and I'll take the other half home to oh, give to my fiance. So. Okay. No, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. That More thriftiness. Sense. More thrifty tips from the wolf. Yeah. 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 There's nothing wrong with that. Do you think during this last year, actually during this last year, what's the best piece of advice do you think I've given to anybody because I have given a lot of advice. Have you? Yeah. Because I, there's nothing entering my mind right now saying, you know, this is a great piece I of advice. I have been Buddha-esque. Uh, yeah. Which, for those people who can't understand my accent, I mean, I've been a little bit like Buddha no. in the prevalence no. and quality of my wisdom and advice. No, it, no see, I disagree. I, I don't think you've given that great of advice. All right, then. What's the most amazing fact I've told you about things... The mantis shrimp. Mantis shrimp. Yes. Still love the mantis shrimp. And, yeah. and uh, oh, no, we can't talk about that because episode's going to come out a little bit later. Well, another About mantis spirit shrimp. animals. Oh, right. Yeah, spirit yeah. Animals, yeah. yeah. Uh, we already recorded that one, so uh, you're going to have to, to yeah. wait on that. And then, wait, you know, we'll get there soon yeah. enough. So, uh you know, I I kind of like this episode because because now it feels like you know we're we're just doing you know whatever we want, right? I was gonna say you could actually text my fiance, who's one of the few females who listens to the show, and ask her to give us a glowing review. Oh no, no, here we go. It's not your mum, is it? No. I thought about that, mm. but that would actually probably Shepherd's mum loves me. She would come on the show. What's yeah. going on, man? Oh, so we so we've got Eric on the show. Oh, Eric, Eric Spivey, yeah, our great friend who. Yeah, we we always reference Eric on the show, yeah. and now with our one year anniversary show, we just figured we would call Eric yeah. out of the blue and go ahead and record him. Yeah, you know, oh, being wonderful. on the show, and and now Eric's oh, while I'm sitting in the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, Eric Eric's probably a little bit pissed right now that we just did this, but it, you know what? We got to get Eric on for a few minutes. Well, he probably thought it was an emergency or something, which is why he picked up. Well, also, Eric also knows I call him maybe once every three months. Yeah. So he's like, well, why is Max calling me like this? Kind of once every nine months whenever yeah. you're dying or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, so that's, Eric, that's a, on you. Er, Eric, we're here. We're recording our one-year anniversary show, and we've referenced you so many times, and you've never been on the show. So we figured, it, you know, let's call Eric and let him talk for just a few minutes. Yeah, let's bugger up Eric's dinner on a exactly. Tuesday night. Well, timing is just impeccable, too. So where have you gone to eat? Sitting in a restaurant eating dinner. Where have you gone? To, <laughs> what restaurant have you gone to eat? Uh, uh, a mono up off of 114. A mono? If you have any representatives yeah, open listening to this show, yes. we do not yet have a restaurant <laughs> sponsor. So if you would like to get in touch with our friend Eric Spivey, who is eating at your restaurant currently, right. or you can connect with us at thewolfandtheshepherd.com. It's a wonderful Italian place. Yeah. 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 Worth the visit. He we hasn't eaten yet, but he's just giving it a glow. Right, before and he we starts, so. we also full well expect Eric for you to get them as a sponsor for our show. Yeah, since you're oh, eating there right yeah. now. So if you leave there and they're not our sponsor, we're no longer your friend. Yeah, maybe write it. In You'll the- just cut this out, and yeah. you won't you won't do this episode yeah. at all. Then yeah. right? we'll we'll go back and cut it out like <laughs> cancel culture. All those episodes we mentioned you in. We'll go back, re-edit them, and it'll be like you never existed. Or we could it's tell Eric. Really a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, but we could also tell Eric to go to another restaurant because he might be at this restaurant, finish dinner, and by the time he gets in the car, yeah. he might be hungry again. That does sound like something Eric would do. Yes. Yeah. Now, Eric. Quite well. Now, um, we mentioned earlier that uh, women also 
occasionally have some interesting things to say. Now, I know you've listened to some of the episodes. Have you listened to any of the interviews we've done with women at all? And in your opinion, should we continue having them on the show? I feel sorry for the women that y'all interview, honestly. I mean, they got to have thick skin. <laughs> well, I think, I think part of the problem is, like, most women aren't used to being in the same room with two incredibly handsome men. So it's always been really awkward for the female guests who have come into the studio. But also, since now we've got the video camera, yeah. it's awkward for them because you can see the moment that Zoom connects and they see the shepherd and I, it's like they're swooning, they can't remember their own name properly, and so we have to have small talk for about 10 minutes before we get going, which kind of pretty much describes your the uh, more dating you talk, history. The more, the more you talk... The shit is actually getting deep where I'm standing. Yes. It is really <laughs> well, well, not only that, but I'm almost thinking that it's more like it, when we connect on Zoom, it's like, okay, I'm going to talk to grandpa and dad. And I'm not going to say who's grandpa and who's dad. Mm. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it is what it is. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so what's the topic that y'all are discussing? Oh, oh, there is zero topic. We yeah. we finally decided. You know what? On our one year anniversary, we're going to act like a you know morning radio show, and so we're just making random phone calls. Uh, and so, of course, you're you know getting recorded into the board, and everybody's hearing you talk. So, you know, uh, do you have anything that you know might be of interest to our listeners that? you know you know about what's coming up this next month almanac yeah just waiting for all the craziness to come through as far as whether or not the q anon stuff is legit or not well not the q anon the q stuff is legit right. waiting to see if if uh the whole world's gonna explode or implode as as they're wearing the nurses out with this or the medical staff out with the forced mandated vaccination. Yeah. Um, I've heard that one hospital actually has backtracked uh, out in California and because they were about to lose 900 nurses. Wow. And they, they, they stepped back as far as that goes. But we're getting close to those times, uh, the, the time limits that they put on all that. Yeah. So it, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Not to mention Julia Thon's last, uh, court case is October, either October 27th or 28th. So, um, all kinds of weird stuff happen, yeah. potentially. Or yeah. not. Might not be. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting enough stuff happening in the main news at the moment. But um, what I really love at the moment is that I think this week there's going to be another variant of COVID coming out, which is great because I'm trying to collect the t shirts for each one. Oh, they're already talking about one in New Zealand. Yeah. One that, like, uh, your feet fall one. off or something if you get it. Yeah, right. The one which, uh, <laughs> which only one person in the whole country has got or something. So they closed down the whole country for oh. it. But um, no, I thought what I'd do, because I'm not getting the vaccine, is I figured that what I'd do each time I catch COVID and one of the variants, I'll get a t shirt you know, kind of like COVID on it and then underneath and kind of script writing, it will have that variant of it. And so hopefully I'm going to collect the whole you know, set. One thing, one thing I am curious that your listeners might be able to help out with, has anyone that they directly know or have any one of them got COVID twice? I'm curious about that because I've heard it's extremely hard to get COVID twice. Right. The antibodies stick around for a long time. I'm just curious if, if anyone of your listeners have had COVID twice to uh, go on your YouTube channel and just, and just mention that. Well, there were, be... yeah, there weren't actually any recorded cases of people who got it twice where the old test wasn't involved in one of the diagnoses, you know, the tests, which now the CDC and WHO have oh, withdrawn. Yeah. Yeah. Because they said it can't tell the difference between COVID the and the flu. Test. Yeah, so there's no right. there's no evidence actually that anybody has got it twice because nobody has been tested with a reliable testing kit to say that yeah you definitely have COVID this time you definitely have COVID this well, time. Personally, I don't think you know once you get the antibodies from having it naturally that you're going to be reinfected without an absolute ton of mutation. And in this short period of time, I don't think that right. can happen. Now, one interesting thing which a lot of people don't know 
is normally when you develop a vaccine against mutations is that you will take uh, the blood um, and cells of somebody who's already been vaccinated because that's how you make a vaccine strong to protect against variants. You don't uh, do the research on somebody who's been completely unvaccinated. Um, so it just adds to me that... Or on pregnant women. women. Yeah, so it, it <laughs> always seems like they're making stuff up as they go along. Um, yeah, well, you don't, you, don't, you don't test an experimental drug on pregnant women. That's absolutely... That's, that's, oh, I can't even describe how horrible that is. Yeah. It's just the whole concept of it. Or a, a, a virus that kills what, or 99.97% of 35-year-olds survive it just fine. Right. Um, if, you, if you're under the age of twelve, and, and the like CDC hasn't even 10, they haven't even isolated it. Yeah, they haven't even, they haven't even isolated the virus. So mm-hmm. come on. Yeah. Yeah, something's out there. Something takes away your taste buds. Something's killing people. So whenever the flu cases drop from thirty five million down to eighteen hundred in the United States, yeah, for the whole year, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. At least you know if it's science and all of the science and stuff. The idea of science is asking questions and and challenging. The, the given hypothesis, and whenever they say follow the science, follow the science, well, that's what you're doing. You're asking questions. You're like, okay, why does this, this doesn't make sense? So, yeah. Anyway, well, I'm going to go back into the restaurant right. and finish my dinner. You have a lovely so, Italian dinner. Don't forget to I, mention I, the I will come down and, and yeah. I will come down and join you guys for an episode. All right. Sometime soon. All right. Cool man. Right. And Tell I might me. I might bring some whiskey with me. All right. <laughs> very good all right well hey, hey you know eric we yeah. we've always kind of you know bagged on you on the podcast and everything but the only reason we do is because we're good friends so uh we appreciate it's okay. that i don't listen to y'all anyway yeah, so. right well on. yeah we we don't listen to our own podcast <laughs> so we get that yeah all right all right guys thanks yeah, man be all good right. you know, I'm kidding. <laughs> all right Right. So, so what about? I, I mean, this is it, no. This is kind of fun that we're actually doing this. I mean, we we really had no plan with this. So now we're it, we're doing all this random stuff, right? So oh, I already uh, had a text from Katie earlier today. Is she are you calling her now? Katie, no, oh, uh, no, not Katie. Oh. Hello. It's our favorite librarian, oh. Kelly Holt. And my, Hello! And my least favorite Candy Crush Saga player. <laughs> oh. Okay. You're going down. Yeah. Oh, I will I, crush all the candies. Yeah, we have a bit of a rivalry going on at the moment. Because last week, I had a lot of downtime, and I did like about almost 70 episodes on Candy Crush, and I was like 20 ahead of the nearest person on my friends list. And then all of a sudden, at like about 3 o'clock in the morning... Every time it kept showing the leaderboard, when I got past like an episode, Kelly kept like rising up the ranks till she was like two behind me. <laughs> and this was yeah. like three o'clock in the morning, which yeah. is understandable for me because I don't have anything to do. But I thought, what's she doing? Well, she she should be taking I care of the library. Four. I get well, no, I get up at four every morning. That's ridiculous. Why are you trying to like beat Elon Musk by an hour? <laughs> Well, I have to read for an hour before I start my day, mm. and I have to exercise, and I have to drink a lot of coffee. Do you do it all at the same time? But no, one oh. right after the other. Because <laughs> you could read while you're exercising, if you're smart about it. Well, I do listen to a book while I'm exercising. Uh, oh, see, the listening part I can get. I mean, if you're trying to read a book, depending on, you know, maybe if you're on one of those bicycle things, right? And yeah, you, can, you could do the recumbent bike, or you could do the even like that little stair stepper machine mm, and still oh, breathe. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. That's an unusual question coming from somebody who neither exercises nor reads, Mister Shepherd. <laughs> yes, that's true. I don't. <laughs> yeah. beli- I don't believe in yeah. either one of those things. It's like you asking her about birth control or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. But but Kelly, hey, we're we're celebrating our one year anniversary, and you know you're one of our favorite guests. You taught us oh. so. Oh, wow, much. that's so wonderful. Yeah, you well, taught happy us. happy anniversary, guys. Well, hey, thank you. thank you so much. You taught us so much about the public library system, and we know that, it, you know, we put it on our Facebook and everything that you actually won an award yeah. for, like, the, you know, 
from I I think it was the president that said you were the librarian of the country and you got this special medal and you won like two million dollars, right? Oh, that's close. I did get a parking space though. Yeah, which is very, it's very nice. Was that the parking space, which is actually further away than from what the one you collect normally parked in? <laughs> No, no, I, I, but I did laugh because the parking space they gave me is the one that I park in every morning because I'm always the first one there. So, uh, uh, so good. But I, I think a lot of our listeners learned a lot about the public library system. I mean, they, they really did. And I know I did. I know the wolf did. I mean, it, it was amazing. But here's, the best, but here's the real question. Have you been to the library? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Hey, I, I'm, learned, I'm, I learned a lot about the mantis shrimp on that episode, but I still don't own one. So it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's true. In in fact, I, honestly, Kelly, I thought about you the other night. Uh, because, Probably shouldn't say that. Uh, no, no, it's not creepy oh, like right. that. I was, was going to edit that yeah. and make that sound yeah. really awkward. No, my, my wife told me that my son got a book from the Fort Worth Public Library a about like six months ago mm. and we just found it and my wife's like i don't know how much we're gonna have to pay for the overdue Nothing. fines on this and i'm like wait i know a super good librarian who said hey some of those overdue fines are now gone depending on the library so maybe we don't owe anything and she's like well how do you know this i'm like well because of kelly Kelly explained this. Yeah. You know, it, it it's that good information that we actually are delivering out here on the podcast. Yeah. And I had yeah. mentioned a number you... of times on this show, Kelly, that we were actually shocked to have female guests on the show, which had something interesting to say. But uh, then we thought, well, uh-huh. Kelly even managed to make libraries into an interesting topic. So yes, yeah, and you not absolutely, off, you absolutely did. did. Yeah, you absolutely did, Kelly. Oh well, thank you. I really enjoyed being a guest, and m- my favorite thing to do is to spread the great word of all of the things that the library can do for you. So thank you so much for giving me the vehicle to do that. Well, you're more than welcome. You need to come back sometime, not to give us an update on the library, because I don't think there's that much evolution during the average calendar year, is there, for new features yeah, and products? Yeah, probably not in a year. Yeah. Maybe, actually, what you could come in and talk about, because you said to me the other day, like, no, you said you, you'd you read 100 books this year or something already? Um, a 92 so far. 92, yeah. So I figured maybe you might have something educational to say on your favorite books and the changing of literature maybe across the last... Few decades, well, current you know literature, and blah, 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 blah. What? We should have a book club, and we all read the same book, and then we come, and then we discuss that, that it. That sounds like a lot of work, Kelly. No. How, how about you give us an abridged version, maybe like a one-page bullet point <laughs> thing? And don't – well, actually, just text it to us because – Well, now, may, maybe Kelly could actually read the books – to us. me yeah. and then she could just like send me a text message and say hey here's what the book's about <laughs> mm. you know that that would help me out have you ever thought like, of writing a quick, book no. kelly oh that's a good well, I, I, that's I, an I, excellent I, question because look at read, us go because you've read yeah. so many because you've read so many have you not thought you know what i'm sit down and write a book well i have written a book of poetry um, I'll bring it to you, and right. you could read it. It's very I, short, it's only 65 uh, uh, pages. I had a published book of poetry well, in England. Now, now, hang on. I think we asked her about this, and she yeah. told us about it. Yeah, because but... I think I mentioned that before, that I had poems published as well. No. Yeah. So, well, but good in for you, it's, it's, it's not very good. <laughs> Well, I mean, mine, it's okay. mine is brilliant. Oh, your book on poetry, right? Yeah, my my book sucked. Yeah, but uh, or my books sucked, but uh, they're still selling. That's uh, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I just get so much joy out of reading that you know I don't have time to write. Uh-huh. But if I were going to write about, well, I actually have thought about writing a cute little picture book, but I can't draw. Oh, about. You've come to Someone no better place for the illustrations. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you need to hire the wolf to do the illustrations. Oh, my word. And if oh, you, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you want to not sell a copy of that book, <laughs> then go ahead and hire him, no. and you will okay. be taken care of. Yeah. 
Well, the idea for the book is that um, somebody gets three wishes, and one of the wishes that they wish for is to find everything that they've ever lost. Mm. Does that just mean uh, physical items, yeah. or is that the twist yeah, of the story? Like, you know, that they get back lost loves and lost opportunities. Because if you haven't, you might want to go with that direction and just kind of give me some credit in the foreword. I don't know. <laughs> Should I? Yeah. Well, you know, but haven't you lost so many things that you just wish you just had them back? No, you know, not like really. I lost this. No. No, I don't think so. You know, like all those socks that don't have any mate to them. And no. Uh, one car yeah. that I shouldn't have sold, and I wish yeah, I would have still had it. it. That's more decision based, emotional. That. You sold yeah. it. Yeah, that's uh, different. It's a crap example. Uh. Yeah, I'm talking about like those things, like you know, the twenty dollars that that fell out of your pocket no. at the Rangers game or whatever. I, d- I don't you know? want. No, I don't want to sound sexist, but I think that's more of a womanly thing, losing things, because mm. women are very good at putting <laughs> things in places where they're safe. And they know where they are, but then they're like, you know, uh, like a pet Labrador has kind of forgotten where they dug the bone, you know, where they buried the bone and then they can't remember and then they have to dig up the whole of the front yard and watching a woman look for something she put for safekeeping a few months ago is pretty similar. <laughs> well, you know, I did read that squirrel only remember where 20% of the acorns they buried were. Mm. So, so 80% of the acorns, I guess that's why we have so many trees, wow. don't get dug up again. Huh. So do they, so when you say that, do you mean that like they just go back and like dig maybe 50 holes but only find like 20% of the ones they dug or they right. just specifically target the ones where they remember exclusively where they dug? Because there's I a little bit know. of a difference there because that. they're random digging and coming away with 20%. Maybe that's not too great, but knowing specifically where 20 are, that's pretty cool. Right. Yeah. You think that's good? You think that's a good number? Yeah. I don't know if I'd read a whole book on it, but... <laughs> maybe a pamphlet. Yeah. yeah, maybe a pamphlet with <laughs> pictures. <laughs> maybe like a four-page, you know, kind of window pane of pictures with the evolution yeah, of squirrels. Yeah, lots uh, of pictures, and, uh, Lots of pictures. Yeah, probably, so. probably the four. Well, hey, Kelly, thanks for, you know, chiming in. Uh, I know it was short notice and everything, and we certainly appreciate you coming on the show. We got to have you back. You got to tell us about, you know, what's coming up with the library and all that good stuff. And I know when yeah. we had Armin Mazzani on, the mayor of the city of Keller, you know, mm-hmm. we it, off offline, he talked about you. Yeah. I mean, he knew about you and all that good stuff. So, uh <laughs> You know, he's, he's a nice guy. I really he, enjoy working with him. Yeah, he was no, awesome. n- no, he's a super great guy. Yeah. Super great guy. So, well, Kelly, well, enjoy it's your. Good to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy your evening, and we appreciate you being a guest on here. You know, and catching up with us on our one year anniversary. So, thanks, <laughs> Kelly. Happy anniversary! Thank Bye, you. guys. See thanks. Ya. Bye. Oh, um. I know normally you're not supposed to share private text you got, but Eric just texted us, and I just figured oh. we might as well read it out. Oh, no. We, well, he texted both yeah, of us. Yeah. yeah. It says, uh, everything you'll call me, which I think he meant every time, so he's obviously uh, dictating it. Uh, oh, he he's doing the yeah. the voice the to text the thing. The Samsung yeah. cheap version of Siri dictation thing he's doing mm-hmm. that. Everything you'll call me, I think someone must have died or got caught masturbating in public. Yeah, probably. And need to get bailed out of jail. I guess being on an impromptu podcast is the least of my worries. He is right there, actually. Uh, I have no clue what that's supposed to mean. Well, yeah. No, he said normally he's only used to being called if it's an emergency. Oh. Well, it and it was better that I called him versus yeah. you. Yeah. Because, uh, like we said, I rarely call Eric. Mm. So. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. I, you know, I've sent another couple of text messages, and this has all been last minute. Could, you know, just oh, just like everything. We, can you not get Pat Beeman? I mean, I know he's a busy man. Oh, uh, let's see if we can get Pat Beeman from his, on an island. If his island isn't uh, flooded, yeah. Uh, let's see if we can get Pat on here. Actually, his island does uh, disappear for about two months, starting the end of September, doesn't it? Disappears for the last part of the fall, early I, part of winter, you before know, it, it can be seen So again. here's the problem. We're, we're going to call him here, but I, I don't know if 
he's going to be able to answer. Well, because uh, Karen, his wife, went in. Well, yeah, but he might be very busy with, you know, his podcast and everything, so. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. we so we do have Pat Beeman with On an Island with Pat Beeman. Uh, we tried to call you just on the happenstance that you weren't too busy with your podcast. Uh, we're recording our one-year anniversary, and we hoped you would answer, and we know you're busy and everything, but... Uh, just wanted to catch up with you. We haven't done an in other news and all that with you, but uh, you know what's been going on, Pat? Well, I appreciate you guys coming right now. I'm in the middle of my fantasy football draft, and uh, oh. you know, I almost didn't answer. But anytime you guys reach out, I want to be available. Yeah. So you know, you've done a lot for the podcast. We've uh, we've grown our listenership every time uh, we I show up on on the. On the Wolf and the Shepherd, the applications uh, for membership grow, uh, and we we actually have issued a few credentials to, for people to listen as well. So uh, it's a great relationship. No, so it's kind of interesting. You're talking about your fantasy football. I mean, somebody like you. I mean, that's got to be a big money league, right? It, like, so so tell us about a fantasy football league that you're in, like. You know, for for all the people that I'm sure probably are in fantasy football leagues, like explain your fantasy football league and how that one works as far as the money and all that stuff goes. Well, uh, again, it, it's one of those things that you have to ask. You probably can't afford it. Um, uh, you know, let's, let's just say that uh, a considerable amount changes hands. Generally, I think that, we all are in for, you know, at least five figures by the time the league is done yeah. or by the, the season is done. And, uh, you know, again, first place gets, you know, 50% of the pot. And, and it kind of breaks down to their, uh, you know, weekly winners. Uh, normally pick up about 1,000 each for each week. And, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's generally just for good time, really. Right. So, it, so in your league, though, uh, I know a lot of fantasy po- football leagues – have like a penalty for the worst player. You know, it, you see the guys, you know, standing on the street corner with the sign saying, I'm terrible at fantasy football or whatever. Do you have a penalty in your league for being the worst guy in fantasy football? Probably death, like in John Wick or something. They get yeah. that coin and then they kill him off. <laughs> we, we, no, there, 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 there was talk of that actually exiling to an island, but uh, mm. no, we, it's just uh, you know you just make a little less money, I guess. Yeah, gotcha. Now, actually, so you're being fair with yeah. it. That's good. That's nice. Now, I've actually got a little bit of a trivia question for while you're here, Pat. I've got a trivia I, I question for you. I was on the air and I panicked and I took a kicker because um, I couldn't come up with anything else. Oh my God! He's going to blame us if he loses his fantasy well, football because it was his pull. turn. He's got enough pull; he can change players anytime oh, he wants, lose. any week. Oh no! Be serious. I won't lose. It's uh, you know we're we're, we're a feared team in our league. Mm. So. so, all right, trivia question. Actually, this is for you as well, Shepard, because you kind of alluded a little bit on it, or Pat did. <laughs> Um, where does which movie does this quote come from? Um, if to if you have to ask, you'll never know. But if you know, you'll know what to ask. I don't wow. know. Wow, Wolf, Wolf, I don't know. I'm, and again, maybe it might be the accent that's throwing me. It, up. Come, it comes, I think, from like the third Harry Potter movie. Definitely one of the Harry Potter movies because that girl, well, that, would explain why that girl, know. that girl Luna says it. She says, if you if you have to ask, you'll never know. But if yeah. you know, you'll know what to ask. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know that. Well. I, I was saying that in the kind of like the only way you can get the actual location online or on podcast platforms of Pat's podcast is that, you know, if you don't know, then you're never going to find it, you know, but you've got to kind of know the right things. We have loosened up again, like I said, we get so many requests after a a Wolf and Shepherd episode that that we occasionally grant. Uh, We lower our standards a little bit to let some of the audience in. Let's just say that. Now, is it true that a lot of clues are hidden in the movie The Never Ending Story that if they put them all together, it gives a succinct link to how to um, follow you, that podcast. You, might, it, you probably I shouldn't didn't ask think that. that we were actually saying the name of the movie, Wolf. Well, I, I thought that, yeah. um, I, 
that's uh, again, I think it was fun to know that there was a movie out there that did it, but I think I, I, I thought we had agreed not to. Yeah. Leave the name well, I well I made my girlfriend watch the movie back to back twice and see if she could figure it out, but she was a female, so she couldn't figure it out. So it's, we're just going to keep growing the male yeah. portion, yeah. and it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, Pat, uh, we certainly enjoy you know the fact that you could chime in with us on our one year anniversary. Good luck in your fantasy football draft and all that good stuff. We look forward to another episode of In Other News. We always love when you can come and join us and especially take away from your time on In Other News with Pat Beeman. Uh, certainly appreciate it. So thank you, sir. It, we appreciate your partnership and your support. And uh, may the blessings of Godzilla, the fat monkey, be upon you and your family. Yes. yes. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. All right. Thanks, Pat. He hung up pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, uh, he, you know, look. You know why that was? I bet you Karen started listening. And once they started kind of. Well, go not only that, him, but I mean, it, the amount of money that he's probably pumping I mean, into yeah. his fantasy football yeah. league. I mean, five figures. Yeah. Per square. I, I, no, I honestly didn't know that it was time mm. for a fantasy football mm. draft or whatever. But it was good that he actually picked up the phone and. Yeah. and answered the phone call and everything so I'll tell you uh, what his pa is gonna get in trouble though for letting that call go directly through without filtering it first yeah. well i have a direct line uh, that that's the difference mm -hmm. kind of like we were saying you know there's so many people that we talk to and we don't necessarily with all our guests share the phone numbers i yeah. mean we have a spreadsheet but then i get yeah. too lazy to log them into my phone yeah. And I know you're not logging them into your phone. We have this spreadsheet that yeah. we share, and you know that's what yeah, happens. The number of numbers we have now of mayors, state governors, and political figures. It's uh, right. Yeah, right. probably sell that list to make some money. Actually, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. They didn't. We didn't sign anything. They didn't sign anything. So no, no. But it, it's been kind of fun, you know, hollering at some people. Over this past year. Yeah. I mean... And we should probably have probably like a quarterly thing where we just call up an episode every quarter where we call up some random guests. Well... It, and just have a chat about something. No, I, I totally agree with that, but we got to plan it ahead. Um, I mean, I... I well, sent, yeah, I, figured, I, I sent a handful of texts, and there yeah. was only certain people that said, hey, yeah, I've got yeah. five minutes to talk to you. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, it kind of sucks. I mean, well, it, why don't you? Um, because she should be home now. I don't know. She, she was at uh, dinner getting drunk with our next door neighbor, having some cocktails. But do you want to call my girlfriend because she's one of the few people well, who listens I've, I, to every episode of the show? Oh, hang on. Do what? Do I have her number in here? Oh, hang on, hang on. You should do. Yikes! I just saw this. Hang on, hang on. Uh, let's let's talk to. It, before we and yes we're we're gonna call her but let's let's call the first guest on the wolf and the shepherd let's see if she answers now she's afraid hey uh are you afraid to actually answer the phone layla <laughs> afraid to answer it yes <laughs> yeah so so we, the first guest on the Wolf and the Shepherd podcast was Layla Caraway. Mm -hmm. I mean, and she told no. us she told us the story about you know the uh, the the mess with Panther Island and all that good stuff because you Wrong decided you decided you were going on vacation, yeah. and so I called Layla and I said, "Hey, Layla, will you come on the podcast?" Mm. And let me interview you. And Layla said, I, you know, I don't know if I want to do this and blah, blah, blah. And then she came on and mm. she was a rock star. Well, it's understandable because she must have thought, there's no way on earth I can feel the wolf's shoes. So I can understand the hesitancy. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but but Layla, we're, we're doing our one-year anniversary show. And, of course, we we couldn't... We couldn't leave you out. So we just wanted to call you and, you know, talk to you for a few minutes and, and catch up a little bit and see what's been going on with you. Well, 
you know, you, you mentioned Water District. We Mary got reelected to the Water District, and she is trying to make changes. I just saw today online where they have a sign on the door that says, Welcome to the District, but it basically says, Go away. They won't let you in the building. Mm. Uh, and, and by the way, you know, just to kind of catch up, everybody, in case they didn't hear that, Mary was on the podcast, mm. and Mary came on the podcast because of Layla. Mm. You know, and it, she came Layla, on as part of a, a re-election campaign and yes. got elected onto the wolf. Yeah, she yeah. got the wolf and the shepherd bump. Yeah, you know, and it was yeah. part Layla, part wolf and the shepherd. Yeah. Um, like ninety nine percent wolf and the shepherd, one percent Layla. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Mary got calls from. Uh, all over the United States from the little so we heard, yeah, people about, that wanted to support yeah. her. Yeah, so tell us about the guy from Flint, uh, Michigan. Yeah, it was Michigan. It, you, you called me and and we were talking about a different topic. We we don't want to bring that up right now, but tell us about the dude from Michigan that called Mary or reached out to Mary. Yes. Yeah, he was so impressed with the uh, and you know, disgusted with with what he learned on your podcast that he reached out to Mary and he, he, he of course, wants to vote for her but can't, but he was very supportive and, you know, who reaches out across country just by hearing someone to let them know that, you know, they're not alone and people got it. So it was great. Yeah, I thought it was just funny that somebody somewhere else in the country was so pissed off and was thinking about water that they searched on the internet for podcasts about people talking about water and somehow landed on ours. Right. That's a bit of a, you know, yeah, but Mary doors type situation. Yeah. But Mary's one of those powerful women. Yeah. You know, she, she's got her stuff together. She knows what she's got to take care of. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I felt, you know, with that, initial interview with Layla and it, Layla kind of interluded Mary it, during that. Mm. And I knew is as much as Layla puts forth all of, you know, what she's talking about and how much she gets behind all of these causes and everything. I mean, Layla's an activist. Let's, uh, let's not need, forget that. An, Layla's an, an activist. Accidental. Yeah, I, I mean, it, Layla gets in and she fights. She's a fighter. And when she told me about Mary, I'm like, yeah, we got to do this. Like, it, Mary's so interesting. We talked to Mary and then we brought Mary on the podcast. And now she's on the waterboard and she's mm-hmm. stirring it up. Yeah. She's raging against the machine. Yeah. Right. And the machine is actually a printer that nobody can print to. But she's still <laughs> raging against that machine. Daily. Exactly. Sometimes with violence. Yes. Yeah, but, you know... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> protests can't always be, you know, peaceful. Sometimes you've got to beat the crap out of the printer to show yes. it's his boss. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's an office space episode. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit. That's a, photo, yeah, that's a photocopier, isn't that? Or something. Yeah, yeah. I think Mary it, is very peaceful. Yeah. But yeah. Mary is very intelligent and Mary is not scared. But Mary is very peaceful. She is way more peaceful than I am. Yeah, she had yeah. the normal issue of um, when we have a female come in the studio, she was awestruck at being in our presence and so got a little bit nervous, especially when she had to plan a kind of like speech at the end of the show of how people would get in touch with her and all this stuff. She got all starry eyed and. You know, we had to send her in the other room to practice because she kept losing it. She just couldn't practice with us looking at her. No. Well, it, it was probably it was probably your fake British accent. Oh, was that it? Yeah, <laughs> that you faked over the last year. Somehow you faked this British accent well, over the a, last well, year. Well, is the thing. Some people who caught COVID lost their sense of smell. I just changed my accent. Oh. Yeah. I never thought did about it that way. vocal cords. Layla, how did you not change your accent over the last year with COVID? Uh, Texans can't really do that. Oh. <laughs> okay. You just can't. All right. Well, that explains why my voice hadn't changed, too. So just <laughs> had to clear that up. So, well, Layla, 
you know, what's going on with you? It, what what do we need to know about, you know, the crazy Tarrant County politics that you were right in the middle of? Like, it, like you were the absolute, I don't want to say lobbyist, but it, you're right in the middle of everything. It, you have your finger on the pulse. So what's going on? Uh, excuse me, sorry. A lot of elections coming up, a lot of judges getting ready to run. So they're all over the place getting their signatures and putting their names on ballots. There's going to be someone running against our congresswoman again. So I'm looking forward to that. And like I said, uh, there's a lot going on at that water district. And there's a new news source in town called the Fort Worth Report. And they just blow the Star Telegram out of the water. So um, I'm very excited that there's a voice for people in Tarrant County again. And I'm looking forward to working more with this group. And I'm so excited for you guys, your year anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks so much. It, did you hear our podcast with Tim O'Hare, who's running for Tarrant County Judge? No, I have it saved because you told me Tim was coming on, and I, I was really looking forward to that one, so I have it saved. It's next up on my list to listen to, so I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, that came out yesterday, right? Tim O'Hare's yeah. One? Yeah. No, in fairness, yeah. It, and mm-hmm. by the time this comes, this comes out, out, it's yeah. it's going to be... It will be not yesterday, further on from yesterday. Right, yeah. right. So. An unspecified amount of time yeah, passed exactly. yesterday. Maybe yeah. I shouldn't have. Yeah, yeah I just, that. just say in the future. It'll be coming there out in the future. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, Layla, thanks for spending a couple of minutes with us. Uh, tell Keith to buy you a drink. Uh, we love you both. And thanks so much for your support and everything with the podcast. We really appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you guys. So Thank yeah, you, Let Layla. me know when I can help. Thank yeah. you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Be good. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. I I mean, it, God, this has kind of been fun. You never call my girlfriend, so if you call, well, she's bound to answer because she'll probably think, no, oh, it, I'm no, I on know a that, but but okay, here's here's the deal. So I'm gonna call her, mm-hmm. but you're gonna have to give like a two minute soliloquy about while, what. Oh, while you pee. What, while I run to the All restroom. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we well, yeah. connect to that and I'll talk to her. And... Oh, oh, do you want to go ahead and call yeah. her and then I run to the restroom? Yeah. There's uh, no way oh. you're going to be done pissing. Oh, in no, two minutes. no. That's actually probably a better idea. 14 minutes for one pee. Mm. All right. So here we go. Now, which girlfriend am I calling? Uh, The one I bought the ring for. There we go. Oh, okay. Well, the expensive ring. So. Not the ones I bought the cheap rings. So. Okay. I never stored her last name in here. So uh-huh. I just wanted to make sure I didn't call the wrong girlfriend. Right. You know, because I've got like, yeah, you know, 20. Tristan I've got, I've got t- like Tristan girlfriend, one, two, three, yeah. four. And then you send me those links about, yeah. you know, it, it, here's the rank of them, you know, based off today. Yeah, that's right. not even how you spell a name, but. Hey, Max. It's Max. It, no, it, it, it it's oh, not. It, it's you. it's not Max. It it's the wolf and the shepherd. And guess what? He, you were on the air with us, and you're lying. No, it's true. No, it's absolutely true. And guess what? He's going to actually interview you for the next like two minutes as I retire from the studio for two minutes. Yeah. Oh no. He's gonna go pee. No, um we've actually go been pee. calling some old guests and we've had some other guests call in. I think <laughs> like five or six of them, we've lost count. But as one of the few females who listens to the show uh, we wanted to just ask you a few questions, but as Max has gone off to take a piss, which normally takes, as I mentioned, 14 minutes, it looks like it's just going to be me asking you questions, which I could have waited till yeah. I got home to do. But anyway, what's your favourite episode so far? And I know it's the ones where I have done the majority of the talking, but, you know, which one? Oh, 
Well, actually, always the favorite episode of my last one. So I would say Ideal Woman Part Two. Is that because you can't remember very well, or just like that is genuinely? No, the like last I remember one. Ginger's. No, no, no. I remember Ginger's. I, I still like the um, Junior Erickson. Right. That's still one of my favorite ones because I think he's an interesting character. Yeah, he called in earlier. Actually, he was on the show earlier. He called in, spoke for a few minutes. Oh, very good. Oh, because this epi- this episode is being recorded for our one year anniversary. By the way. Oh, congratulations on your anniversary, yeah, by the way. Yeah, because otherwise, in the grand scheme of things, you know, on the social scale, we wouldn't be talking to somebody like you. But um, <laughs> as, as you're one of our uh, largest female supporters of the show, because you and the other female who listens kind of, uh, you know, fight it out for that title, uh, we figured you'd yeah. get your opinion on a few things. So um, okay. do you think overall that were a bit controversial on some topics or do you think we dance away from treading a thin line i don't think you're controversial at all you don't oh that's good no not even the sexist bits oh you you guys are very sexist yeah so you don't think that's bad though politically i don't think you're controversial sexist i think you guys are a bunch of punks yeah yeah yeah, because, you know, I mean, we believe that, like, racism is really bad and one of the worst things possible, yeah. but we're still kind of on board with sexism a little bit. Nobody sent us the updated... A notes. little bit. Yeah, nobody sent us the updated yeah. operating system, so we're still kind of working from a 1950s Good. viewpoint of which neither of us were alive, but Max's dad, the shepherd's Max, dad... Max is a 1950s she- Shepherd's point. dad um, actually gives us a great <laughs> reference point in history yeah. of how men should view women, so... Yes, yeah. and, um, and I firmly believe he is absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe that too. Right now, um, what do you think the funniest episode is we've done? I told you, oh. Ideal Woman Part Two. Oh, you think that's the funniest? I thought you said that was just your favorite. Oh, I think that was most memorable. Oh, most memorable. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, the funniest, the funniest. Did you um, learn anything from that hmm. episode, The Ideal Woman? I just kept listening to hear if my name was mentioned. Oh, well, did I mention it? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you? Um, I, I'm you pretty mean? sure I didn't mention my wife's name during that episode either. Not my name. And, and I'm hoping to God she never listens to that episode. <laughs> right. Yeah. We probably don't because I'm never going to be allowed to watch a summer hike movie again <laughs> after that episode. <laughs> yeah, Penelope Cruz and Summer Hayek. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Girl. That and there's be disappearing a, off for another five minutes. You keep mentioning that. Yeah, I need that. to. Yeah. I, needs to I, I need to go space. ahead and, yeah. and go she back. Take my phone. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, because yeah. no. um, you have uh, terrible uh, internet on your phone. Mm, that is true. No. I'm still stuck yeah. with 4G. The, All right, next the LTE thing. Because I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here drawing my out. Oh, you still at your dinner? Yeah, I'm still on her phone. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, remember it's two women, so it's yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, typical yeah. women. I, it's, yeah. I mean, they they <laughs> always say, you know, I've got all this important stuff to do, and the important stuff to do is sitting at dinner yeah. with their what friends. You, all right, then. Which, by the way, oh, which yeah. no, no, Cindy. By the way, you're sitting there at dinner with your friends, and you're well, looking at your cool. phone, and you're scrolling through Facebook. That's basically dinner with your I friends, yeah. except no. for the. Five seconds that you say, "Well, we got to take a picture to prove we're at dinner," and then post okay, it on a, Facebook. All right. <laughs> a, no pictures been taken. B, we didn't look at Facebook. C, we've been talking about the vaccine, and we've been talking about uh, how Japan has ruled out all their vaccines from Moderna because of the metals in them. Um, what was it? A, B, C, D. <laughs> we've been talking about. The people that have had reactions from COVID versus the ha- people that have had reactions from the shot. So okay, I, oh, okay, I'm about. sorry. Uh, you sound <laughs> like Cindy in your voice, but what you're saying sounds like Eric. <laughs> yeah, so Eric I'm completely show, confused uh, yeah. right now. Uh, now, um, what what episode do you think you've learned the most from? Actually, been the, the genuinely uh, most educational. I'll, I'll go. I don't know the the, the episode, but I would say the content and the shamanism, because uh, I actually tried the breathing technique. You did. Oh right, yeah. yeah so I, I remember. Vi- yeah, I remember Victoria actually. Uh, that doesn't remember. No, he doesn't remember because he um had an unscheduled yeah. amount of delta uh, eight, uh-huh. which was not, not my fault. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty not. Hard. Yeah. yeah. What's that sound in the background? Why are people talking? Yeah. Yeah. Did did the waitress just come up and say, "Would you like another bottle of wine?" 
you know, what are you doing? <laughs> no. We're paying it. We're, we're checking out. All right. Giving her coupon. This is what and happens when I talk to her at home. She just starts talking to somebody else on oh, the phone. I, know. Like, so, I can't hear you. Yeah. All right. So ridiculous, right. Ryan. Uh, yeah. Just yeah. dealing with women. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Max, are you free on October 23rd? Did you tell us a yes or a no? I literally did not understand anything you just said. Oh, I asked you about oh. that date where you're available, and you said you might have parents weekend. At- oh, uh, October 23rd. Yeah. Uh, so yep. that is parents weekend at Texas Tech oh, University. No. And really we're still though. trying to we're still trying to figure that out because of course my okay. daughter is like I don't know if you awesome. you know we Thank want you. you to come out and all that good stuff so I I have not forgot about that and I've told Tristan uh, you know I get that I mean, we're gonna figure it out it, we will totally okay. figure it out so mm, no worries. <laughs> Well, I, I told you, you to, told, I told you to send me a text and I'd ask him. You didn't have to ask him live on air. Oh, sorry. No, can I right. tell you live on air so I can give you a conversation to talk about when I hang up? Yeah, Gas sure. We'll probably ignore it, but go Seven, on. $7.59 a gallon right now to talk about that one. Where? California. Well, we don't really like California, so why are we going to talk about that? Well, that's another reason not to like California. Well, good. I wish it was $17.29. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there you go. And there were floating alligators. Um, all right. I will well, you home. All right. Well, thank you, Cindy. Uh, we appreciate you chiming <laughs> you in with that. us. All right. Be good. <laughs> Enjoy right. your you dinner and, like and take <laughs> pictures of yourself and post them on Facebook. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye, bye. Guys. Oh, that was a mess. See, she didn't have anything interesting to say, but, you know. Like I said, she's our biggest female fan, so I yeah. thought I might as well. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, here we are a minute and 40 in. Now I feel like I got to call my mom. Yeah, call your mom. Because your mom, or, or your mom, my mom loves you. Yeah. We know that. I so, was going to say, if we call my mom, we're going to have to use that psychic medium we had on the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh Let's see what happens here. My guess is we're going to have to say hello like three times. Mm -hmm. Hello? 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 Yeah. Did you call me? Who is it? Max? No, I didn't call you. Well, I think Mother called me from the home phone a couple hours ago. Oh, okay. Wanda... Did you call Max? He's on the phone. Yeah, she called you. All right. I guess she gets the phone. Yeah. Did she want anything? Hey, while you're on, it, can you check up well, or can you tell me how to check up on my income tax? Yeah, but hang on, Dad. So uh, Tristan and I are recording our one-year anniversary special right now, and we're oh, okay. Well, well call me back. Then. No, no, no. We're making phone calls, and we want people to be on the podcast. And Mother called, and Tristan wants to talk to Mom. Oh, okay, Wanda. Yes, I'm on the phone. Okay. They want to talk to you. All righty. This is what happens now. We just wait. Till no, done no, on the phone. my mom's on All the right. phone. So, uh, oh, oh, I thought you yeah, meant, oh, no, thought you mom meant she was on the phone. So now she's not talking to yeah, us. Yeah, so mom, we're recording our one year anniversary special of the podcast. And you called earlier, and Tristan said, "No, we we got to have your mom on the podcast because he wants to talk to you." Yeah, I had I had a question. Um, what was the most romantic thing that Claire, the shepherd's dad, ever did for you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that was the question. What's the most romantic thing what, he's ever done? What was your question? What's the most romantic thing Claire's ever done for you? Honey, I can't hear you. Just a minute. 
Okay, now. Okay, what's the most romantic thing Claire has ever done for you? Oh, my. Probably kicked me on a cruise. Is that a euphemism for a different part of the a body? Cruise or to Alaska. A cruise, ship, cruise ship. Pardon me? <laughs> no, kissed you on a cruise ship. Yeah. No, no um, took her yeah, on, on a cruise. cruise. On a cruise. All right. You got to remember, Mom, he's British, so he only hears certain well, he things. He knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah, but that's the thing. She gets so enamored by my accent that she can't concentrate on what I'm saying. I doubt that. I, it's true. Isn't oh. it wonder? You love my accent? Uh. <laughs> Do you love his accent? Oh, yeah, I like all accents. Oh. oh. Even mine. Yeah. That's watered it down a little bit, the popularity. Yeah, well, the, your accent, though, Mom, is just kind of, you know, right in the middle of the country. It, there's no real accent there. You have that. Well, now, wait a minute. When I lived in Chicago, they said, oh, you got the cutest little southern accent. And when I come down here, they said, oh, you got a northern accent. Mm. So see, even the people here notice different. Yeah. No, that makes sense. It, everybody says I have the Texan accent, and of course Tristan well, has you the. you do because you've been in Texas all your life, right? And and of course Tristan has the British accent. That's true. Yeah. That's true. What was now? The... I like some British accents, and I don't like others. Yeah. Oh. It depends on how they use it. Hmm. Okay, so that's actually kind of interesting because Tristan always talks about the different British accents depending on what part of Great Britain or England you're from. So right. you're say, you're saying, as an American, it, you know, it, you're not involved with anybody from England. You can say, I like this accent versus you don't like this accent. So, do you like Tristan's British accent? Well, yes, I'd like it. Hmm, well, that's good. Oh, why wouldn't I? What was the worst thing Max ever did as a child? The worst thing that Max ever did as a child? Yeah. What age child? Oh, so there's a lot of events. Do well, I just start really doing it by year or what? Do right. what? So he did a lot of bad things, so I've just got to pull out an individual year. Like, what was the worst thing he did when he was age 10 or something? Oh, well, I wouldn't let him do bad things. Oh. So he didn't do bad things. Oh. Because I told him if he did, he would get a whipping. Oh. And that worked out wow. pretty well? I was a, I was a strict mama. Oh. Uh, explains a lot. Did... Well, the, well, this was an extremely bad idea. Well, no, this is your time now to come forward and tell your mum something which you've never told her about what you did bad as a kid, but you never told her. So now you can come clean oh. on one thing. Go on, just anything oh, that you well, never told I, your mum. You know, it, the ironic part about this is I think my mother knows everything bad I did as a kid. Mm. And I think I've told this story even on the podcast when uh, it was a few years back, uh, probably, I don't know, six or seven years ago, and we were having Thanksgiving over at the house, and there were liquor bottles in the cabinet in the laundry room where my parents kept their, you know, kept their liquor. And my dad said... Hey, uh, well, I've got this bottle of whiskey, and there's a lot of whiskey in there. And I said, no, we shouldn't drink that because my friends came over years ago. We drank all the whiskey and then filled it up with water. And I had to say, D yeah, that that's not actual whiskey mm. in there. That's water. Mm. I think that's actually the worst thing I ever did. Yeah, I don't really believe that. But, well, I never yeah. knew you did that, and I don't think... Your father would have known that real quick. No, what? No, what? I had told him 
on that Thanksgiving that, yes, it, don't drink that J&B whiskey bottle because oh. it, it's so watered down because it's like one-eighth whiskey and seven-eighths water. And that oh, was... you are so bad. Oh, that was like I five or six years ago. I just didn't catch you on all of them. I was smart. Five or six years ago, so you were like in your thirties or something. Yeah, something like so that. So why couldn't your friends? Well, that's when I got caught. Oh, but, oh, that's when you got caught about. It. Oh, yeah. I thought your friends could have bought a new well, bottle of whiskey but, if they were adults. But, but my dad doesn't drink all that much, yeah. and I think my brother was over at the house, and he wanted a glass of whiskey, and mm. my dad said, "Oh, I've got a bottle of whiskey up here," which was a bottle of J and B that yeah. had been up there for like. 30 years and my dad said oh yeah i got a bottle of whiskey up there and wanted to dust the you know literal dust off of this bottle and pour him a glass of whiskey and when i saw it i thought oh yeah i remember you know i had some friends over and yeah we drank Mm -hmm. all that whiskey and then filled it up with water Uh, yeah Mm. i blame you why I didn't know you at that time, yeah, but yeah, I figured I might as well blame you. Uh, we could have blamed your brother as he was there. No, my brother wasn't yeah. there. He just said your brother was there. No, my brother was there to actually have the drink of whiskey. Uh, yeah. But he wasn't there, you know, back when I was 18, mm. 19 years old. Yeah. Okay, uh, last question, Wanda. Uh, which one of the grandchildren are your favorite? And which one is your least favorite? They're all my favorites, honey. <laughs> um, they all have different things that make me like them for the things that they do. So I don't have a favorite. See, it not, I can't say that about children because Max is my only child, so he mm. has to be my favorite. Damn but right. All yeah. my grandchildren are my favorites. Oh, because Max has got a favorite child, haven't you? Yes. Yes. Won't say which one on air, but... You right. Know. Yeah. Well, see, you know, when when uh, when Olivia was the only grandchild, she was my favorite. Yeah. Well, then along comes Connor, and then I have to separate it and say, well, guess what? You're not the favorite anymore, Olivia. You've got to share it with Connor. And then here comes Jake, and whoa, we had to split it three ways. And I thought that was going to be it, but no, then here comes Mason a few years later. Yeah. So we just have four great, great grandchildren. Well, Max has actually been using the Chinese system of favorability. So obviously Olivia, being a girl first, kind of slipped down the rankings of favorite child as he had each boy. You know, it's kind of the Chinese system because... You don't really want any girls yeah. to be a Chinese, and so Max has adopted that. So you know, yes, because I'm Chinese. Well, apparently, just adopting that system. Oh, you are no. not. Chinese. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh dear. Well, there was that chance no, meeting on the No, they're all great cruciate. grandchildren. Yeah. I I just love them all to pieces. Sometimes I get a little upset with them, but I love them all to pieces. Yeah. Well, guess what, Mom? I get upset with them every day. So. <laughs> Hey, yeah. Even when he's, even when he's traveling you're out of town, with them, you're supposed to guide them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know <laughs> exactly. Well, hey, mom, well, thanks. Did you all do a podcast tonight? Yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. We're we're doing our one year anniversary oh, podcast. This is a podcast. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, I'm I'm sorry. I should have been more uh, more with it. That's all right. Oh, no, no. Uh, only that's... about 200,000 people will hear it, so you're mm. right. Yeah, no. We, we, it, we, we were calling people, and you called during the podcast, and I saw you calling, and I'm trying to call everybody else because I have my phone tied into the board, and I said, hey, Tristan, let's go ahead and talk to my mom because she's calling me right now. Why not just go ahead and talk to my mom? Yeah. Oh, do you remember what you called him for before? Because didn't she call you before for something? Uh, I called him because he does a lot of shopping for me because I can't get out and do it myself. And I looked at the ad from the paper today, and Kroger has soda pop on, 
Diet Coke for 12 packs for $11. So I told him in my message to him, hey, every time you go buy Kroger's, pick up for 12 packs of Diet Coke. Because your father's drinking it now, too. Why? He asked for regular Coke, but he drinks my Diet Coke. Mm. Yeah. Now, I see you're doing that northern so, thing of calling Kroger Kroger's. No, I call it Kroger's as yeah. well. And my wife gets on me all the time. Mm. It's like, it's Kroger. I'm like, yeah. no, I call it Kroger's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't no, it's and right. My parents call it Kroger's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm never going to get away from that. Mm. What, what's the difference? An it's S. Kroger? Yeah, it's just Kroger. Yeah. Yeah. I know. But oh, I've always called it Kroger. Yeah. I know. That's, and and that's why I do the same the thing. I've been yeah, the only correct bitty. the only correct, correct edition of the S is in a singular possessive form. Yeah, but see, we're in America, we mm-hmm. don't care that much for the English language mm-hmm. like you British people do. Mm-hmm. You ain't say that's true. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's- yeah, last time I checked, we kicked your ass. Mm, not you me, know, personally. You know, mm. a couple of hundred years ago. Mm. So, All right, yeah. well, well, Mom, thank you so much. Uh, it, can you put Dad on the phone? Well, remember, the, the sale starts tomorrow, and every time you go by Kroger, pick me up some Diet Coke. All right, I'll do it. So and if I, you need to get some money, come by and get some money. Okay, yeah. I'll I'll do that. But I I think Tristan would like to talk to Dad. So can you put Dad on the phone? Okay, hold on. Claire, Tristan wants to talk to you. They're done with me. <laughs> oh shit! This ought to be interesting. <laughs> At least we're almost at two hours. So you're going to have to carry this one. All right. And remember. Hello? Hey, Claire, it's Tristan. How you doing? Doing good, you? Good. Um, a few times on the podcast, Max has mentioned the incredible, awesome advice you've given him about women um, when he was growing up and stuff, including the story about when you were driving down the road and you turned off the radio and turned to Max and said, Max, I need to tell you something very important. Women are crazy. And then you turn the radio back on and then just continue driving. <laughs> so, well, he remembers those things. Oh, and yeah. I don't. He, he does because that sage wisdom he is taking to heart. And so it's kind of lessened the blow of when he actually found out all women are crazy that it wasn't a shock. Yeah, and and so by the way, Dad, uh, we're recording our one year anniversary podcast right now, and we've been calling people, and we, we you know, we decided we wanted to get you know you and Mother on the phone and get you on the podcast. But I have told that story to not only the podcast audience but several of my friends. I remember driving in that nineteen ninety. Chevy pickup and we were heading out of the stockyards and you reached up, you turned the radio off and you looked over at me and you said, Max, if there's nothing I have ever taught you, I want you to pay attention to this right now. Women are nuts. And you reach back up and you turn the radio back on. (laughs) And I will never forget that. (laughs) I believe that. Right. I believe that. Now, Claire. Because that sounds, that sounds like me. Yeah. Now, what dating advice would you give to today's youth? Because I know, according to uh, Max, you were pretty smooth back in your younger years, pretty exciting guy. How How would you, nowadays, if you were in a bar and you saw a woman you liked, uh, what would you say to her? This is assuming Wanda's kind of not around. She's gone off and married Tom Cruise or something and you're left single by yourself. If what, what would I do? Yeah, what's your dating say strategy? Again, I, yeah, if you, if you, is, yeah, if you well, went to a bar and well, you saw... Well, no, no hang on. I, I know where you're yeah. going at, right? So yeah. let's back it up. Back in your day, Dad, 
How did you pick up yeah. women? Yeah. What was your go-to line or action? Oh. Yeah. How did I pick them up? Yeah. Yeah. Not the physically. Not like you've got to do is be nice to them. That sounds hard. You've got to be nice to them. You can't down them. You can't swear around them. You've got to be nice, and, and you've got to compliment them on uh, themselves, you know. Yeah. But then what happens when you get them? Well, now, hang on, Dad. Uh, let's let's be honest. Can Mother hear you right now? I doubt it. Oh, okay. Oh. I, I just want to make sure, because if she's listening, mm-hmm. you know, maybe you're kind of censoring yeah. what you're saying, mm-hmm. right? Oh, well, I don't think she's on the phone. Oh. Wanda, are you on the phone? <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. All right, mm-hmm. fair enough. You should probably assume that if she can hear you, sorry, if you can hear her, she can probably hear you. So, right. Yeah. So, um, so back in the day, did you ever have like a popular pickup line you'd use? Like you said, you'd say nice things, treat them nicely. How would you introduce yourself? What would you say? Well, I would just back in the days when I would do something like that. Of course. Uh, I would introduce myself naturally and then say something along the lines of, you know, I've, I've noticed how you're conducting yourself and it's very impressive and I just thought I'd like to meet you. Go from that. All right, Dad. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm 42 years old. I'm going to call bullshit on that. <laughs> I think you had more game yeah, than that. I don't think you. Yeah, you're you're trying them on their conduct. Yeah, you're trying to be too nice yeah. here. Uh, well, I'll tell you some stories sometime, Mac. That'll kind of set your hair on fire, and you you won't believe them. If you don't believe what I just said, you won't believe my stories. Yeah, but they're true. Well, I I know you know, Dad. You you have some incredible stories. You led an incredible life and uh, you know I think that's what Tristan's trying to drag out of mm-hmm. you it, Tristan has heard some of the stories you've told me it, it, that we're not going to share right now you know about you know it, we'll just say Kansas City in the bar and stuff like that and so he's trying to get some of those shocking stories out of you. Yeah. Did I ever tell you about my my buddy controller in Kansas City who used to, we used to take off work about 8 o'clock at night and go down to the bar around 12th Street uh, in well, Kansas City. Yeah, no, let's hear and that one. We went into the gay bar one night. No. The reason we went in there is because they had a bunch of men, they were all men, but they had a bunch of men in there that were just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, they dressed, they dressed like women, but they're men. That uh, doesn't sound and like a great reason to go into a gay bar. Yeah, gay <laughs> bar. And uh, my friend, he, he, we called him Cookie. Because he was like uh, 77 Sunset Strip Cookie. He's always combing his hair. He had big, long, blonde hair. He's always combing it. And uh, we were sitting there at the bar, and this piano player was a, a drag queen. And Cookie said to me, he says, I'm going over there, and I'm going to try to get a date with her. Y'all playing the piano. I said, you don't want to do that. He says, why not? I said, because that's a man. And he said, it is not. I said, well, it sure is. So he gets up and goes over there, and he starts buying for him drinks and all that stuff. And now it comes time for the bar to close, and he was going to go with her. And I said, you don't want to do that. And he says, you're just bound to determine that's a guy, aren't you? And I said, I know it is. Just look at it. And about that time, 
this guy turned around and he took off his wig. He had on a big blonde wig. And he took off his wig and he was bald headed. <laughs> and my friend just went out of his gourd. He couldn't believe it. So, well, we but. Had a lot of, we you, had a lot of good times back in those days. Yeah, and you're talking about that. This is what uh, the early seventies, late sixties. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I became a controller and or started with the FAA in 1959, and so this was probably in the early sixties, mid sixties. So uh, I guess one of the big questions that a lot of people have about air traffic controllers, you know, back in those days, I mean, mean, nowadays, and Dad, I know we've talked about this, you know, back in your day, you went to work, you had a white shirt on, you wore a tie, all that stuff. But a lot of people wonder... You know, were the controllers, you know, snorting coke and, you know, doing drugs and all that stuff to get away from the stress of the job? The only thing I knew anybody did, no, I don't know of anyone that done any drugs, period. But they loved to drink and they would drink. You know, we got off at 8 o'clock in the morning, and a bunch of us would go down to the bar. We'd sit there maybe till noon drinking beer. People would say, Why, how can you do that? Well, you do it because you learn to sleep all hours of the day and night, and you, you learn to live life at all hours of the day and night. There wasn't any 4 o'clock in the afternoon to drink a beer. You drank a beer at 8 o'clock in the morning or whatever time it was. So everybody that I know of in air traffic drank beer. There was very few of them that was alcoholics would drink in excess, but there was a few. But most people just had a couple beers to relieve the stress after a hard eight hours of work and that was about it yeah but what, i don't know of anybody that took drugs yeah the, one thing that i remember you telling me when i was a kid that you you share a a booth or whatever you call it with whoever controls planes and I remember you telling me that you would alternate buying cartons of cigarettes. You know, because you're sitting there at the scope, you're smoking cigarettes, and you're smoking half a carton of cigarettes a day. Is that true? <laughs> well, I was drinking when I quit smoking in Chicago, I was smoking five packs a day. And by the way, fi- I, five packs of Marlboro Reds a day, not Marlboro Lights, not something like that. Reds, no, it, you know, real it cigarettes. Big, well, I spoke different kinds: Marlboros, Winston, and they were all the long cigarettes. I didn't smoke any of the short ones, except once in a while I would I would get a package of Cools or of Salem. And now the Salem was long, but the cool was just a regular side cigarette. But that would just be try to cool my mouth off <laughs> from smoking so much. Yeah, but it, you had told me that, you know, you would share a booth with somebody and, you know, you were smoking five packs of cigarettes a day. I mean, that's crazy to think about nowadays. Well, that's true, and even when I was in Chicago and quit smoking, the reason I quit smoking was because one of my cohorts who sat at the desk next to me, you feel, you have this feeling that somebody's looking at you, 
and I turned around, and he was sitting there with his feet on his desk. His chair turned around sideways and was staring at me. And his name was Doyle Haglin. I remember this. I can picture him right now. And I said, the hell are you looking at, Doyle? He said, I'm looking at you. I said, well, what are you looking at me for? He says, because you're smoking three cigarettes. I said, what? He says, yeah. You got one in the ashtray. You got one in your hand. You got one in your mouth. And sure enough, I just realized that was true. And I said, well, I'll be doggone. He said, you know, Claire, he said, you need to quit smoking. I said, you know, Doyle, you're right. And I wadded up my package of cigarettes that I had and threw them in the trash basket. He said, that's not good enough. I said, what do you mean? He says, throw your lighter away. And I had a lighter that I just dearly loved. And I said, oh, Doyle. And he said, no, you got to throw it away, too. And I did. I threw it away and never had another cigarette. And that was in 1976. Oh. I remember that real well. Oh. That same guy, another little funny story, the same guy, Doyle Hagelin, he had a fish tank in his basement, which he kept goldfish in. And one day he come to work and he was sitting there and all of a sudden I started smelling something really bad odor. And I turned around to him and I said, Doyle, are you okay? He's sick. And he says, why, well, what's the matter? And I said, man, I tell you, the smell coming from your chair is terrible. And he got up, and he had got up that morning and went down in the basement to feed the fish, and one of the fish jumped out of the, the uh, bowl, stepped on it. And the, ste- the thing was caught in the crease of your heel and your sole, and that fish was in there and rotted. <laughs> That's what the smell was. Yeah. So uh, one last thing, Dad, I, I want to bring up before we, you know, close this part out is uh, okay. your friend Dave Lassinger. Uh, yeah, he, he's he's suffering right now with cancer and everything, and he was in the the movie Airport and. Right. I, I, I'd like for you to walk the listeners through the movie Airport and where you kind of got him into that role and how Dave Lassinger got into that role and where he's at now. Because I, I remember as a kid, Dave Lassinger was important to me. Uh, he He was... You know, wh- one of those people I look at growing up that, you know, cared about me and all that stuff. And so can you kind of d- just short form walk through your relationship with Dave Lassinger and getting, you know, with your relationship with him, getting him into that movie and where all that's at right now? Well... I didn't uh, get him into the movie. He was in the movie long before I knew him. Uh, he was a controller in Los Angeles. And, of course, I was a controller in Kansas City. And we were both at Oklahoma City as an strict air traffic control instructors. And he, uh, I was a supervisor, and he came on my crew when he came in to Oklahoma City from Los Angeles. That's where I met him. And he was, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, and Sam's just, getting angry uh, right now. you, you got to call him <laughs> Sam down. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, there's a car going by out here, and he's 
It's coming in the yard, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, real quick, Dave uh, and I became friends simply because I worked with him, and then I got him. Now, I did have the influence that I got him to Chicago from Oklahoma City. When he left Oklahoma City, he came to Chicago, and then I did have influence with him getting him to Denver. Uh, I'm the one that's responsible for that. But him and I were just good friends, and right now he's got cancer of the throat, and they've called hospice in. So he's in his last legs. And we go back a long ways. By yeah. the way, there's something you probably didn't know. He was a motorcycle guy. He had a Harley. Well, I remember Dave telling me the story when he was in the movie Airport that he took his check that he got from the movie and he went and bought a motorcycle. And then (laughs) the joke was his subsequent checks, he would take those checks and go buy a pack of cigarettes. (laughs) with those checks yeah. on his motorcycle. Yeah. And and yeah. that's what uh, that's what I always heard out of Dave. Yeah. Well, that's probably true because he he was still getting checks from whoever he got them from. Uh when he was in Oklahoma City, when he was in Chicago, uh so I saw him get these checks, but they dwindled down to where they weren't very much. Yeah. The initial one, of course, was pretty good. But yeah, enough to buy his motorcycle, and and that's yeah, what he did. Evidently, so. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that's good about deal. It. Yeah. Well, Dad, I I know we could sit here and go through a lot of stories. Uh, oh yeah. It, yeah. You know, and I'm thinking about a lot of interesting stories you've told me over the years. But uh, I'm going to let Tristan ask you one last question. If he has one last question, then we're going to let you go and try to, you know, finish our little one-year anniversary. Yeah. So uh, deal up. we asked Wanda okay. earlier, earlier what was the naughtiest thing Max did when he was a kid. Now, obviously, Wanda might only know some of the stories, but do you have a tale of uh, something bad Max did as a kid? Bad stuff? Yeah. I I can't remember anything bad that he did. Uh, He sometimes would take the BB guns out and then finally got up to the point of a twenty-two rifle and shoot it out here in the backyard, and he shouldn't have done that, but, you know, that was that was something that wasn't that dangerous back in those days, but uh, I can't remember anything he did bad. Uh, he got in trouble in school. He Oh, one thing he did bad, and he, I still have not forgiven him for it, and that was he was in the Boy Scouts, and he went up and got everything but his uh, what do you call it, Max? When you get the the highest rank you can get in Boy Scouts, Eagle, Eagle Scout. Scout. Mm, yeah, yeah. I had an Eagle Project, had it all lined up and everything, and then refused to do it. So he didn't become an Eagle Scout. Yeah, and I'm no. still hacked off at him about that. Yeah. No, I did that. But, uh, Dad, tell us about when I got in trouble in school for hacking the computers and what you did oh, yeah. when, it, when you went to the principal and got pissed off at them because I was able to hack into their computers. Yeah. Well, that's not, I didn't get mad at you, though. I got mad at them. Exactly. That was the beautiful yeah. part about that because I I thought you were going to be mad at me, but you were actually mad at the school that you let some, at that time, I think I was 13, some 13-year-old kid get into your computer system. Well, not only did you get into it, you basically shut it down. <laughs> 
and they had to find out how to get it started again. And they had to ask you to help them get it started. Yeah. And that's what really got me is because you was there to learn, and you were not learning because they were not teaching you what needed to be taught, and they kind of ignored you because of it, and then it'd give you all this free time for you to goof around. And during your goof around, when you you didn't really hurt anything, is all you did was send some messages to another classroom and another one of your friends. Yeah. And that, that hacked me off a little bit that they would allow that to happen. And then turn around and punish you for it. And then while you were being punished, they ask you to help them. Right. And it, it just doesn't. Yeah, but, it doesn't and, sit well with me. Yeah, it, and I always appreciated that out of you because uh, it, when you're talking about sending the messages, I figured out a way to hack into the printer system, and I was just printing out stuff in random classrooms, <laughs> you know. It, it's stuff about that. Hey, this is the KGB and blah blah blah. Because I'm 13 years yeah. old, they, you know that's the best I could come up with. But when they couldn't figure out how to fix it, then they turned around and came to me and said, "Hey, we're going to punish you because we're going to give you more punishment than somebody that gets in a literal physical altercation." Than somebody doing what you did. But by the way, can you please help us fix this? And when I told my dad, yeah. my dad's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like he, you're punishing this kid for doing this, but then you're now asking him to help you fix it. And you, you're punishing him for this. And it, you know, I, I always had this deal with my dad that I wouldn't lie to him and I would say, you know, if I did something, I'll tell you I did it. And my dad always knew that about me that, it, you know, yeah, dad, I did this. I, I sent these goofy messages through printers and I was able to do this. And that's why my dad went to the school and said, you're punishing my kid for infiltrating your security and he's 13 14 years old and you're going to punish him more than some kid that just hauls off and hits somebody in the face and beats the hell out of them like where is the fairness there yeah well there's a lot of that stuff goes on in the world today and you know we're living through some of it now in our government so yeah. Well, Dad, but remember, we're talking about early nineties. Oh, I know. Yeah, th this I is. Know when we're yeah, about. Th this is ninety two, ninety three when this happened. So yeah, I I remember. Yeah. By the way, it, we've never talked about this on the podcast, but uh, when I was in that class, it was actually a typing class. It wasn't actually a computer class. It was a typing class. And when I got in trouble for what I did, I went back to the class. They put me on a typewriter, a legitimate, not hooked up to a computer typewriter with paper rolling through. And I had to use a typewriter because they were too afraid to mm -hmm. put me on a computer. Ironically... <laughs> Two years later, I take another class at the same school, computer-aided design, and there were a few people in that class that knew the rumor of what I did, and they came to me and they said, can you do something where we don't have to, you know, do the final? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Wrote a virus destroyed the computers in the lab <laughs> and yeah we didn't have to do the final <laughs> so yeah I, I i i was terrible but at the same time most of what i did was harmless right it it, it was i agree it, it and it you know that the ironic part you know while my father's on the phone i i remember my father bringing home that first computer and me learning all that stuff. And my dad told me, 
you got to learn this. Like, this is the future. You need to learn how all this works. Because if you don't learn this, you're going to be so far behind. And here we are, you know, 30 years after my dad brought that computer home Mm. that so many kids can't use computers. They, they get a phone or whatever. And even my kids, like I, I can't figure out why this isn't working. I can't figure out why I can't connect to Wi-Fi or whatever. Mm. We're still suffering with that. Yeah. But my dad years ago coming from not a technological background had the foresight to say, you got to learn this. It, this is important, and we're not doing that now. Yeah, it's, it's a shame. You know, the other day, Connor was over here, and I asked him if he would help me with my cell phone. I figured what it was wrong with it, and I said, he picked it up, and boom, 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 had it fixed in no time. And I said, Connor, how would you do that? Man, that, that was neat. And he said, Grandpa, he says, I grew up with computers and things like that. So he says, I know all about that stuff, stuff that you never had to deal with. And he's right. He, he knows what he's doing. So did Jake. So. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, well, Dad, thanks for, you know, hanging out with us for a little bit. Yeah. We're, we're going to let you go to bed. So. Thanks so much. Appreciate Thank you, Claire. it. Cool talking to you, buddy. Is it okay if I don't go to bed, if I just watch TV for a little bit? Well, yeah, yeah. Go <laughs> ahead and turn Fox <laughs> News back up. That's fine. <laughs> We're good with okay. that. All right. All Thanks, right. Dad. You guys take it easy. Thank Love you. you. Bye. Bye. Well, I guess we ended with the most important guest of all, the yeah. person responsible for you being here today. Yeah, well, you know, that's true. I mean, mm. it, lived in here we are. for 72 hours and here you are. Yeah, well, I mean, here we are over two hours. Mm. You know, hopefully people are it listening by, the, by this time. But yeah. uh, it's been a fun episode. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it really has. Yeah, you know, checking in with people, talking about stuff. Uh, yeah, it's been cool. So what have we got coming up after this episode in terms of releases? Because I know this is going to be our one year. What we got coming up soon for people to look forward to? Uh, we've got like three or four guests coming up. Mm. I don't want to answer the question of it, who it is and what it is i know it's over there but we got some cool just calm down cool, you get people too excited yeah no, we, no, no we got some cool stuff coming calm. up but uh but yeah i i just want to say i appreciate you know the last year yeah you know i, I think we've had a lot of fun had a lot of people listen we've had a lot of good guests uh even the women even the women yeah yeah uh talked about a lot of interesting topics Mm -hmm. uh had a lot of horrible guests Mm -hmm. that we suffered through not a lot we had a few no not a lot i i agree with that smittering let you know one hand, five fingers. It wouldn't even take the five fingers yeah, of especially of, not that one. Uh, of who the horrible guests were. Yeah. But there's two or three on there. Mm-hmm. You and I both can say that yeah. it, it's like God. If we could have done this over again, yeah. they would have never been on the podcast, and we wouldn't have put it out there. Yeah. But you know what? It's been a learning experience, yeah. and we're not over this about, last we're not year. About you, Bill Vaughn, who stole our food. We're oh, about oh no, food. not Bill Vaughn. Not Bill the Vaughn who stole our food. No, Bill Vaughn still owes us so much food. food Bill yeah. Vaughn, it, you know what? You're actually one of our favorite guests because mm. you still owe us food. Yeah. So it, mm. yeah, it, it's not Bill Vaughn. Maybe we get an update about digging holes. Like if yeah, it's still as difficult to dig the ground. As Maybe it was he, last year. Yeah, maybe he can dig a hole yeah. and find the food 
that he yeah. was supposed to bring well, us. Well, do you think we could maybe get and bring in a plant pot or something and like give him a trowel, a garden trowel, and watch his technique in digging holes? Because that's got to be more interesting than the last time. Oh, that's probably true. Now we've got true. video, we can pep it right. up a little bit. Oh, you know, that's our problem. What's that? If, if we would have had the video... We, we could have had the evidence against Bill Vaughn. Yeah. Right. But we didn't have the video. Yeah. So now we got to get Bill Vaughn back in here mm. to bring us dinner. We, and then he's yeah. going to eat the dinner on the way. Then we have the video evidence that Bill Vaughn ate our food. Mm. Yeah. I think we need to okay. do that. We'll do that. So, uh, I mean, thanks everybody for listening to us watching us all this over the last year i mean it's it's been fun uh we hope we're gonna do it for several years uh we we made an agreement when we started this podcast that it's gonna be fun and if it becomes unfun we're just gonna quit and we've had our moments Honestly, we've mm-hmm. had our moments where we've said, no, we're done. It, and then we kind of circled back around and we said, no, it, let's tough through it. Uh, it's gotten more fun as we've moved forward. Uh, met lots of interesting people. Uh, it, it's, it's a job, but it's a fun job. So... As far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of work behind it, and it's not like you and I are making a lot of money to where we can do this and not do anything else. Mm. Yeah, Unfortunately I mean, so. Yeah, because we can't get certain sponsors to just cut us big checks. Yeah. We're trying. We're trying. We're, we are trying yeah. so much. No, well. We kind of mention it on the show every now and uh, then. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. We don't actively reach out to anybody. We're just kind of hoping that some representative or something is going to listen and be like, yeah, I want these two people to be the voice and face of our product, which will probably be the most disastrous campaign in Western civilization for probably some, you know, business decisions. But somebody may as well run with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... It- for all the fans out there, uh, we certainly appreciate everything. And I mean, if you look at where we were a year ago versus right now, I hope when we have the two year anniversary, we're kind of laughing at this episode. Like, I don't know. Really? Isn't that funny? No, I mean, we're laughing at this episode, like how shitty this was, mm. you know? So anyway, mm. Anything left um, before before we hit the stop yeah. button? I, I, I want to give you the final thought. All right. Um, my general thought when I sit down and do a podcast is, first of all, kind of how many fillers can we get in this episode where I'm not going to have to do much research? And thankfully, our guests have helped us out with that because our guests come with a whole huge ton of knowledge and we've realized we've just started to ask some questions. Whereas before, the format was mostly me and you, and I was asking you a lot of questions and getting no knowledge in return. So that's been a benefit, the podcast. We're getting more knowledge nowadays from the guests. But um, I think vision going forward is, yeah, we want to improve, not just to become more professional and overproduced, but we want to make it more fun to listen to. You know, obviously I joke about women, I kind of mean it, but I joke about the whole women thing. We love female guests. We love both of our female listeners, including your mum, if she ever bothers listening. Um, but no, we hope to just get more and more exciting people on. We understand not every topic is everybody's cup of tea. That's understandable. Sure. Um, but no, we hope to continue listening. Keep sending in the questions, even the really crap ones, because we'll probably answer them someday when we get bored, won't we? Right. Yeah. Someday. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we're due to check email tomorrow because it's the first of the month. So anybody who's oh. written to us in the last four weeks wondering why we haven't that replied. That is true. Tomorrow's tomorrow is email the day. day. Tomorrow's yeah. the day where we check the email. Yeah. So, mm. look, 
with all that said over this last year, thanks for tuning in the Wolf and the Shepherd. We certainly appreciate it, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Wolf and the Shepherd podcast. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, thewolfandtheshepherd.com, to your friends and colleagues. And please leave us a positive review on iTunes when you get a chance. Check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content. Join us next time for another episode of The Wolf and the Shepherd. Ooh.